Hello. We are standing now. Ah, <laughs> Nej, no, no, we aren't. No, jag skulle bara säga någonting. <laughs> vi gör inte det. <laughs> det funkar. <laughs> Lura oss lite där. Vi får se oss bara ja, på skärmen. När, när ni ser det så ska titta ner. Ah. Så räknar ni av den. 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello and welcome to the 49th edition of Rolton Cup. Sorry for the delay. We had some technical difficulties. It seems like yeah, you couldn't hear our voices when we were speaking before. So hopefully it should be working now. Um, My name is Anna Kremling and I will be your host throughout this tournament. And uh, we will be having different guests who will be coming to the studio, different grandmasters, who will help with the commentating. And today I have the privilege to be sitting with the Swedish grandmaster, Ulf Andersson. Thank yes, hello, welcome to the studio. Yeah, thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Yes. <laughs> event of comment. yeah, yeah. It's It's interesting. It's a good tournament, the Rilton Cup. Yeah. It's a very good tournament. Yeah, it's yeah. it's Sweden's biggest international tournament. Yes, yes. That uh, that we organize every year. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's really important for us and for for Swedish chess that we have this tournament. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you're yeah. looking forward to commentate. Yeah. <laughs> these following days. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see the games and to comment a little bit. Yes, yes. Yes, because he will be with us for the next five days. Yes. 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 Yes, so you will see a lot of Ulf here in the studio. Um, and, well, I think we should get going with the games quite soon, just because we have uh, lost so much time with the technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <coughs> yeah. So if we go, I don't think that you can see the game right now. Yes, am I right? Let's go through the games. Yes, let's go through the games. Good. Here we have it. So, uh, this year there are 120 players participating in Realton Cup. Uh, and it's a very strong tournament as you have to, or normally there are some exceptions, but you typically have to be over 2,200 to participate in the tournament. So, it's a, it's a very tough tournament uh, for everyone. Um, And I'm guessing that the first round will have a lot of surprises. Do you think so too? Surprises in the tournament? No, in the no, first round. In the first round. Yeah, who knows? It can happen. It can always yeah. happen. Yes, yes. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. When it happens, it's yeah. normally in the first round. It's very common, common that it's in the first round. Um, but I think we can get, get going with the first game. Uh, which is the top board of the tournament. Um, so it's Dimitri Collers. He's the highest rated player this year, uh, a 20 year old German. Yes. Uh, so it's really nice to see uh, that such a young person is the highest rated player in the tournament. Yeah. And uh, he's, playing to he's playing today against uh, Elham Abdlauf uh, from Norway. And mm. This Norwegian, he is only 14 years old, actually. Uh -huh. Only 14. So yes. uh, it'll be very interesting to follow this game as it's a game between two very young players, a 20-year-old and a 14-year-old. Um, so it's nice to see the upcoming generation yes. playing some good chess. Yeah. So should we maybe start with the opening? Okay. Go through the opening, this game. So let's go from the start. So, if maybe Ulf, if you want to uh, tell us a little bit about the opening. Yeah, well, the French defense, Black uses the French defense and 
uh, I played the Night D2 variation and uh, yeah. a move that uh, Carpo used to play mostly when this he played right here. against the French. And um, yeah, and for instance, you can get to positions with that black reaches uh, the position with an isolated pawn. Hmm. The D5 uh, pawn then? Yes, I if, uh, if uh, C5 for instance, then it can be uh, yeah, E takes D5 and pawn takes D5 back and then both press develop the bishops and white will one moment uh, take on C5 and black plays yes. with the isolated D5 pawn. Exactly. It's interesting play. It's uh, also a way that Kochno used against Karpov in the World Championship in the um, Philippines many years ago. Okay. 78, I think it was. Yeah. 1978, yes. A and he made draws in these games with black. Hmm. But white had the, the initiative in hmm. general. And uh, So yeah. it's a, a sort of position that black plays a bit more passively to try to hold, or is it very, are, are there very open positions normally? Yeah, with this opening? Quite open position. Quite open positions. But easy to move the the minor pieces for black to to develop. It's easy. But yeah. then later you sit there with the isolated pawn, and then if you don't want to lose the no isolated no pawn, <laughs> <laughs> so you try to yeah. hold it throughout yeah. the game. Yeah. Yes. That's normally the sort of play with isolated pawns. I mean, yeah. you can get a lot of initiative with them. Yes. But you just have to make sure that you hold on to them and that yes. you don't lose them. Yes. And that's what Y would try to do, to press against the isolated part. Yes, yes. But okay, it was a bit different. So let's see just how it was. So, okay, let's just go from the start. Yeah. So, yeah. <coughs> black took yeah. on E4. Yes, this is okay. It's also one variation. Yeah. And knight E7. Knight f3. Knight f6. And takes on f6. And so, and now white played g3. It's not the most common move, but it's playable, of course. The common moves are bishop e3 or. Bishop e3? Or uh, bishop d3 also. Yeah. And bishop g5, bishop e3, bishop g5 also. Bishop g5 also, we yeah. can see this here. A and bishop to d3 or to c4 as well. So uh, there are many moves many that you can which are play here. Solely develop moves, yeah. yeah. You want to get out your bishops in this position somehow then. And, and the question is always on which side white will castle, if he goes for the queen side castle or for the king side castle. Of course, because then maybe that also <coughs> Um, I mean, White has to think about that when 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 they develop a bishop. Yes. Which bishop should you develop first, I depending yeah, 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 on which side you castle? Yeah, yes, yes. S and uh, mm. here White chooses the line with the g3, yeah? which is not so common. Now he White wants to fianchet to the bishop and hope, hoping for some pressure on the long diagonal. Exactly, on this diagonal future. right here. But uh, yeah. the the game turns out to be different. Yeah, black plays in a way, and then white plays uh, in another way as well. Uh, and uh, black played b6. Hmm? We can see contra here contra this, and now white decides to play bishop b5 check instead of bishop oh, g2. Oh, that's very interesting because when you yeah. play g3, yes. typically the idea is to yeah. to yeah. put the bishop on g2. Yeah, uh, so it's. Very interesting move to not do that and to yeah. play bishop b5 instead and, and develop the bishop on the other diagonal. Yes. And now he has to play bishop G d7. And what is the idea with bishop b5? Why yeah. does white not play bishop g2 here? Yeah, because he wants to, to try to get the black white square bishop on the wrong place. Yeah. To d7, or normally with such a move, you want to provoke c6. If the bishop would be on b7, for instance, yeah. black would play c6 and to close his diagonal. Exactly. That, uh, this if, bla if the bishop was yeah. here, then you could play c6. And now you can see. he plays bishop d7, 
and then the bishop has to go around bishop d7 bishop c6 and bishop b7 takes a lot lo yeah, longer yes a a and, and the funny thing is the g3 this is normally weakening on the king's side if you haven't fianchetto the bishop yeah and uh, but i i've seen that uh, later on white got uh, an interesting uh, has an interesting idea in this position a little bit later on here yeah and just a question is there is no possible this is a really bad move 97 this is not a move that you play right i i think no 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 not in this position no but I if if one had time hmm? to come out quickly with the black squared bishop in castle then then and then later if you get the bishop on b7 black has a comfortable game yeah exactly a and and the it's not the normal play in normal positions for french defense in this in this land this uh, uh, rubenstein variation that black mm. chooses or play you that uh, usually plays this variation d takes e4 mm. uh, in the opening uh, the rubenstein line that is um, meyer the german yeah. german uh, meyer uh, he plays this all the time yes yeah. yes also we can see that if 97 then once again we would maybe get this move yes maybe this move would yes. once again get the diagonal yes. uh, because even if rook b8 i mean i'm not sure how much black wants to play a position like this yeah this is because yes. maybe you can come with knight e5 and so also exactly so it's very dangerous so this yeah. is yeah he should play bishop d7 which is what he played yes bishop d7 and now a4 is this the most common move here? Also, also, everything is a little bit funny. This, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, g3 and then bishop b5 and a4. But yeah, it looks a bit funny. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's not, uh, as I would say, the the normal play in the position. But it's it's it seems playable. What they have now in the game then he has a okay position white is is disturbing black and he wants to force him with with a6 hmm. here a, a, and one idea to take on b5 is also not really no. really good it opens the a line yeah. and and the square on c6 you cannot if you can liberate quickly with c6 queen d5 and things like this yeah then it can be okay but uh, black chooses to play a6 yeah to hit the bishop exactly so let's go he back to a6 here yes natural move and bishop goes back to e2 okay so white does not want to exchange the bishop no 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 because why yeah and because then the g3 move is for nothing exactly he made this uh, strange move now it would be better to have pawn on g2 i suppose yeah. not on g3 if we exchange the white bishop uh pair yes so bishop e2, e2. go and then back bishop c6 yes also normal to try to gain e the diagonal yes. again yes yeah so and this is a bit sort of like a fight to to get this diagonal yeah uh, yeah and castles Bishop e7, bishop e7 or bishop d6 should be the moves here, but maybe, yeah, bishop d6 is also playable. Yeah. There, yes. So maybe to stop a bit knight yeah. e5 at some point? Yes, that could be the idea to stop that and to get uh, to play, uh, yeah, if you take on e5, pawn takes like like this yeah and then mm, changing queens in knight d7 let's say something like this knight d7 and then this pawn maybe is a little yes. bit yes but why this weak. two bishops yeah in black doesn't didn't like this probably so yeah. maybe this yeah this can be with some advantage for for white this yeah. position would you say here that you should play f4 or bishop Probably f4 f4 is good and bishop on yeah. e3 that seems very natural because the bishop seems very strange yeah yeah 
it's not really doing anything apart from no. defending the pawn. No. Maybe g5 can be a threat at some yeah. point as well. Yeah. Okay, so black didn't really... Played bishop e7. And now like this, so white bishop e7, yeah? Idea. White has a nice idea here in the position. He plays a5. Yeah. And now black needs actually two moves in the position later on. After b5, which is a normal move, I would say. You don't want to take here, of course, because then once again you open up for the for the white yeah. rook. Get an open file against no. the a6, so this e pawn becomes very weak. Yes. Yeah, so b5, b5 is normal. And now a good move, knight to e5. Yeah, so it seems like white is getting some initiative. Yes, and bishop b7, but maybe... Yes, I think if he could go somewhere else. No, bishop b7, and then comes a good move from white. If white doesn't play the next move, c4, black is very good with castles and c5 coming. Easy game for black. Hmm. But white has played c4, which is uh, kind of... You can see here, c4. Disturbing, but maybe the idea is if you take on c4, then comes queen a4 check first. So you don't take, first you play queen a4 check, yes? And then it's, uh, yeah, difficult to see what black can can do there. Because if a move like knight d7, then maybe it's uh, a bit uncomfortable with the pin, and maybe c6 yes. is a weak square here. I don't know, it's knight c6 a move? Yes. Yes, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, white is a good game here. Yeah, because... I mean, something like this to exchange the white yeah. squared bishop is mm. horrible for yeah. uh, for black. Yes, leaves and all these pawns are very weak, and yeah. with the bishop on f3 as well, yes. um, white will have a lot of control over the white squares yes, in the yes. game. Yeah, yeah. So and I and I mean, if a move like this, if you don't take and you know you you get to exchange this bishop and remove the castle from black, yeah, it then it's also very good for white. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, knight d7 cannot be really possible, so maybe king f8 then, but then this is not good for... Yeah, Th then both of them have an isolated pawn then. Yeah. Why black on c7 and white's on d4, but uh, that position would be okay if black had castle. If exactly. If castle, then black is very okay, but with the mm, without the castle then he needs a few moves. He needs king f8, h6, g6, king g7, three yeah. moves, three and more moves. Kind king. of make this yeah. little. Yeah. But th there is an interesting, yeah. an interesting idea. If he makes castles instead of taking on c4. In this position? Yes, here? castles. Castles. Because if, if white takes on b5 twice, then there is a tactic. Yeah, then there is yes. some tactic with queen d5 here. Yes. Threatening. Mate and yeah. the bishop. Mate on g2 and the bishop on b5. So we yeah. lose a white loses a piece here. Yeah? Yes, yes. So if if we can do this, then and uh, then the position is very uh, okay for black, yeah. And what about if you only take one time? Yeah, maybe one time just, yes. yes. And uh, simply to maybe have the a5 pawn here might maybe, or might become strong later maybe. And yeah. maybe to leave the b5 pawn as a weakness for yeah. black. Yes. Um, but then somehow you have to defend uh, the mate as well. So, uh, I'm not sure what would you say would be a good move here. Do you think maybe queen b3? S oh, no, sorry, the pawn is hanging here, of course. Maybe you should just play bishop e3 first and yes. d defend the pawn and then try to take out the queen. Yeah. yeah. And also to stop uh, c5 maybe a bit as well with bishop e3. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but I suppose black is probably okay in the position if it plays like this. The other variation with king to f8, it's uh, more dangerous for black. It seems very dangerous. Yes, yes. And to have a position loses, like this. He will lose a lot of time for, with this. Exactly. But, um, 
But Weiss' idea to to play C4, it's uh, it's the, on the only way in trying to disturb black, no? So he we can see that he castled, yeah. Yeah, yeah good, good. This is what we were... This is what we were looking at. So now what we were saying was that if white takes two times, then there is the tactic with queen d5. Yes. So that cannot be possible. So uh, how do you think that white should continue here? Yeah, I, I'm not really sh sure. I don't, I don't like so much still this g3 and then not to put the bishop on the g2. It this seems is somehow very disturbing <laughs> me. <laughs> This yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, because this position would be so nice if the pawn was. Sorry, I'm moving the wrong pawn. If this pos pawn was in g2, yeah, then, then it would solve a lot of problems. Yeah, that yes, yes. Um, but okay. So, then what? What is the idea behind this opening of playing bishop b5? M because it seems. I mean, it takes away some time for black. It takes a few long, a few more moves to put the bishop on b7. But still, it feels like this bishop maybe is a bit in the wrong diagonal. Yes. N yes. N normally, this bishop uh, comes to d3 or to c4 in the French, no? I mm. In this variation, in the Rubinstein yeah. line. And, uh, or sometimes e2, but d3 or c4 more most common and and um, now uh, it's another type of position so to say it is uh, yeah it white must really have something otherwise black is very very okay in the position more than okay maybe he c yeah maybe he can even be better if white doesn't have anything special yeah here we and also after playing c4, then the d4 pawn, it will become isolated for the rest of the game. Yes. As you cannot play c3 anymore. Yes. So you have to think through c4 as well, yeah. because yeah. of the long-term uh, consequences of but it. But white played for some tactics. Exactly. And, yeah. and black saw the things. He saw everything there with the uh, queen d5 and so on. So yeah. then the, this tactics is a little bit, uh, yeah dubious I think for, for, for white yeah yeah for instance if we have this position with the pawn on c3 and then you could try for uh, moves like b4 later on exactly. and then black yeah. cannot free himself with c5 yeah if you can have that pawn structure into so uh, let's say something like this maybe and then b4, b4 here b4 yes and then develop the pieces into the only break white ha black has it is with the e5 if he wants to break the chain somehow yeah and so otherwise mm, but he but he has good with the pawn on c7 it's not blocking the bishop because if the pawn was on c6 white is definitely better yes but like this the bishop is active on b7 the pawn was here then this bishop it would be like a pawn it wouldn't yeah. really be doing anything yes yes yeah because it's really hard to get out the other way as well uh, yeah. for this bishop as the po as the knight on e5 is quite strong yeah so um yeah so that would be another idea uh that yeah this is a whole different game then this would maybe be more positional would you yeah, say so yeah, yeah yeah this is more positional yeah then uh, uh, in the game is uh, yeah white is uh, pushing a little bit yeah white uh, is pushing yes and then castle is good and now it's uh, interesting to see what white has in mind here how to proceed is b3 any idea w does this bishop want to go to the b2 diagonal or would you say that it's more normal to play bishop b3 uh, b3 is, is good move too yeah it maintains then white can maintain the 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 control on d5 on the d5 square yeah exactly because then if take on c4 and b takes on c4 yes. then uh, the d5 square is controlled yes. by the c4 pawn yes yes so black cannot play knight d5 or bishop d5 no no so that might be an idea as well that's really common to want to play b3 so that yes. you can take on c4 yes. with the pawn yeah b3 looks like a good move 
And maybe also then if sometime if black takes on c4 and white plays b takes c4, then maybe the rook on b1 or the queen on b3 could be y yes. quite strong against the bishop on b7. Yeah, that is true. As well. That is true. Yeah. So, um, hmm. Interesting to see what white wants to play here. Yes. And we can also see that there is some time difference between the two players. Uh, white has 20 minutes more than black at this point. Uh, black got a quick development. He has castle already. All the pieces are standing on reasonably good squares. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it is... Uh, looks doesn't look bad for black at all no no, no. no it'll be a very interesting game to follow now i guess because the piece that white has left to develop is the um is the bishop on c1 yes so it'll it'll be interesting to see as well where this bishop is going to go yeah well but first i like your idea you like with b3, b3 first yeah. and then develop the bishop perhaps to e3 Okay, so even with b3, the bishop doesn't have to go to b2, it no, can go to e3. e3 yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So should we maybe move on to the next game? Mm. And should we maybe move on to the next game? Yeah, that's good. Yes, and then we will come back to this game. This looks really interesting, actually. Okay, so board two is between uh, the Swedish uh, IM Johan... Ferhoff. Yes. And uh, the Russian Sergei Volkov. Ah, yes. Yeah. So uh, this is board two of the tournament. Yes. And uh, I think it's really, I really like the fact that Swedish players in tournaments like this can play against really strong um, players from, from other countries. I mean, from yeah. Russia, from there are a lot of Indians, but yeah. there are a lot of people from very different countries here. Yes, yes. So that's really nice that yeah, they get that a chance to do that. That is good. Cool. Yeah, many nation nationalities are yeah. are here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's like that in most international tournaments, but it's really nice that even in Sweden we can get uh, a chance for everyone to play against a really good player. Yes, yes. So, okay. Uh, Let's look. We can really quickly go through this opening as well. So e4, e6. Uh, also French. Yes. Also French. Yes. yes. <laughs> and also knight d2. Wow. Okay, but now uh, he didn't yeah. take on e4. Yeah, he he's challenging uh, e4 here, and yeah. and White with this move normally plays e5. Yes, and knight d7. Yes. This is very common. Yes. This, yeah, uh, this, uh, yeah, this is mm, kind of aggressive variation. Otherwise, the the a common variation is bishop d three, followed by knight e two. Yeah, followed by knight e two. Knight e two and castle develop like this. Yeah, but mm, and knight f three. So without f four, this knight to f three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, but here white plays for for space advantage playing f4 yeah. himself. <coughs> knight c knight c6 six. and knight d to f3. Uh, this is good. Yeah, so that the knight on g1 can go to e2. Yes. Yes. Queen d6. there. 6 and then and here comes the other knight. A5. A5. Are trying to get some space on the queen side. Yeah. G3. So that the white bishop can develop as well. A4. Yeah. So now mm. black is gaining some space on the queen side. Yes. Bishop H3, not to G2, to H3. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's uh, yeah. If if white in some moment is ready to play f5 and so if f5 is good one day then this is good otherwise the bishop belongs more on d3 where it uh, has attack on to h7 yeah because they have a position now in the game that uh, you can get similar position uh, with with another variation in the French, but then the bishop comes to d3 or e2, where it's better placed. Then h3 is not the ideal square for the bishop. Yeah. But maybe in this line with f, yeah, with f3, 
four and so on. Maybe yeah, you know, quickly knight e two. The bishop he white blocks his bishop on f one, so he can uh, cannot reach d three. This yeah. is yeah, this is the problem with this, no. And in the other variation, where does the knight on e2 go? Because in this variation, we can see that that's the whole problem, that the knight is on e2 blocking the bishop on f1. Yeah, yes. Where does the knight on g1 go in the other variation? Is it to f3? To no, this is it is to e2 also. To oh, e it's also to e2. To e2. To e2. But yeah. first bishop d3 then. Yeah. In the other variation from another position, well, we can see when we come to the yeah. position that they have. Well, you can see. So a3. Yeah, it's okay. Move also. B3. C takes d4. I, yeah. Knight, knight takes. takes. Yeah. So you want to take with the knight and not with the. Yeah, this is good. Uh -huh, so. Yep. Knight v8. Uh, this is good. Fighting for the d4 square. Exactly. So with knight c6. Yes. Perhaps. Bishop e3. Also normal. Knight and knight c6. c6. Castles. Bishop c5. So no, it's we have that position where the bishop should better be on e2. E or if you have also with queen d2 and to try to exchange the black squared bishops for white. If white can exchange those two bishops and ha have that later the square on d4, he can can be better. But, but yeah. now with the bishop on h3, only good if you can have f5 in the moment, no? Exactly, yeah. But I if not, the bishop is in on the wrong diagonal. You can also see that the pawn on e5 perhaps I is a bit weak yes. after f5. So yes. it, it's more a long term plan. Yes, yes, I Maybe. it is. Yeah, I, I mean, if white doesn't get any attack here, black is good positionally in this game. And, and this. Bishop on c8 will not be so bad in the future. <coughs> it can have diagonal from maybe later on from a6 to f1, uh, coming to d7 yes. and so to b5 and, and so on. So, so on this diagonal yeah. somehow. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and we can see that the the white bishop on e3, the black squared bishop, as you yeah. said, white wants to exchange this bishop yeah, yes. because all the pawns are on black, most yeah. of the pawns. So this bishop is doesn't have so many squares to go to. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, nor typically the white squared bishop should be stronger than uh, yes. the black one. Yes. In this sort of, uh, in this opening, or in this variation at least. Okay, so now um, white needs to do something about the knight on d4, right? Because now it's, uh, okay, not yet, but soon. It might be... Queen d2. Queen d2, also planning and to put a rook on d1. Yeah, maybe. in castles. Yeah. So... Yeah, black is probably going to proceed with bishop d7. Yeah. I, I suppose bishop d7. And then one but day... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day to play on the C line. I'm not sure that f6 is the right way. In then you make the bishop on h3 good. Exactly, because the e6 pawn becomes can become a weakness. Yes. So better just to play on the C line for black. Yeah. In that moment, in that in that case, in one one day he needs to change on d4 also. Yeah, and maybe put a rook on c8. So yes, rook maybe f to c8 yeah. maybe. So then come bishop d7. Yeah. And then rook so f c8, for instance. Yeah. yeah. And the pawn on a3 can be disturbing also. Can disturb white a little bit. Yeah. Can the pawn on a3 become a weakness in the future? I don't believe so. He, he, it's, well, it must be very late in the game then. Maybe in in some some end game with. But uh, I'm not sure. It is uh, disturbing. It's there. If I wants to get the pawn, then then well, he will have. A, let's say if he gets a pawn with the queen, the queen is out of play. And white yeah. is a very open king. He pushed all the pawns in front of the king. Yeah. It's very open. And and uh, and also if the queen takes on e3 at some point, it's 
I mean, Black could play Rook A8 and then the Rook could become very active on the mm. A file. Yes, yes. As well, and threatening on A2. So it's, yeah, so this pawn might be very hard to reach, actually. For instance, it would be nice say, for, for Black to have a position with a, a pawn on B2 and his own pawn on A3 the, uh, before Black gets A3. Then it would be blocked, everything. No breaks uh. with B4 exists. And yeah. uh, now Black has, black, black has I more ideas, I think, to, to play for than, than, than White. Yeah, because White needs to, if White wants to proceed with, uh, with the plan, he needs to play at some point F5. Yes, but yes. But then, once again, the E5 pawn must yeah. be protected somehow. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's White's turn right now, Johan's turn. So, uh, do you have, wha what do you think White uh, might do now? Yeah, yes, uh, I don't know uh, how can I play for F5. I don't see exactly how. Otherwise, I would play something uh, rook to c1 maybe, but uh, rook a c1. But still, it's not the uh, it's a bishop on a3. Is it? I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also because if you want to move the rook on f1, then yes. it's sort of taking it's sort of leaving the f5 idea yes yes if you want to play because i was thinking okay maybe rook f1 seems normal to always have the uh, d4 yeah. knight protected to control the d4 square but once again then it's leaving the f5 uh, idea and i don't yeah. know if you maybe can can you play rook e1 rook e1 maybe rook e1 to the, the, that's a kind of logical move in the po position in order to play f5 because I then maybe f5. Then maybe you can go for f5. Maybe. g6 looks dangerous that I don't like for black. Then um, dubious. But I think you should play bishop, yeah, bishop d7. Yeah. Um, or or yeah. if, I, if I take on d4, you take with the bishop on d4. But bishop d7 always comes into consideration of course so that the rooks can become active yes and i'm wondering here this might seem like a very um, crazy move but i'm just wondering f5 in this position yeah yeah because i was thinking okay if knight takes i don't know if f6 could be an idea um, at some point yeah that is true it but is uh, true. of course i think that you should um have played rookie one first because i mean that looks much more natural yeah. to have uh, yes. to have this knight a bit unprotected as well yeah. But is there, is because maybe this sort of idea could come back to play yeah. f5 and f6, but of course Ma maybe... Maybe, well, this, that is the only move that um, he tries to make the bishop good on h3, that the yeah. bishop is in play. Yeah. It's getting sharp, the game, no? And uh, it would become very short, but yeah, probably the rook should be on e1 first because before things yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has there been? Oh, there's been some moves. Are they <laughs> only played? Yeah. They. Okay. So castle. That was the last move we saw. Before it was played. Uh, before he played, yes. So uh, he he forces the exchange on d4. Hmm. Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes, knight takes, c takes, here. Now, for instance, um, the, the, the pawn would be slightly better on b3, I would say, to control the square c4. Yeah. B and, but and now f5 is also, it's not dangerous because it's the pawn will be taken and exchanging the bishops and black has always queen on e6 and rook on f8 and king of g8 defending f7 and can play rook c8 and so on yeah uh, here but um, yeah shall i do this f5 or not it is ad otherwise okay maybe he can come with rook fc1 bishop f1 but uh, in all kinds of uh, queen end games yeah then then I don't think black would have any problem because of the open white king. 
Hmm. There is always some a perpetual check. Yes, that that's needs. something that it's really good to think about. That in end games when the yeah. when the king is so open, the perpetual checks can become yes. very annoying. Yes, yes. <laughs> very, very annoying. I was also thinking that this position f5 might not be as dangerous because there are so many uh, light pieces that have been exchanged. Yes. So, for instance, the knights have been exchanged in this yep. uh, position. So maybe with more pieces, yes. f5 would be more dangerous than yes. what it is Yes. right now. But white plays now a, a couple of good moves here, I see. on the Yes, the let's yes. bishop d7, um, which was very natural, as yeah. I said, rook fc1. Rook c8. And rook, rook c5. C yeah, it's good, good, good move, I think. Um, yes. Controlling the... Question, Shiloh, yeah. one. Yeah. Controlling the c-line, because if now if white gets yes. to play rook c1, rook yes. a c1, then that's quite good. If and black uh, plays for b6, to yes. play b6, and but then... By, remo by removing the queen, by moving the queen somewhere? Yeah, or if you, I'm thinking also to take on c5, followed by queen to b2. So, I'm supposing you're, you're going to take queen Yes, because the, the pawns are not dangerous if you play d takes uh, c5. It is not dangerous, just no. queen to a6, let's say. And then this bishop, bishop yes. b5 and the yes. white squares are very, very weak yes. for white. Yes. I, I guess maybe white has to play bishop f1 then, but still it's quite weak. Uh, they're quite weak. So, okay, so then b takes c5 looks more natural, opening the b file as well. Yeah, and then queen b2, I'm thinking of. Queen yeah. b2, yeah. Yeah, this seems like a quite an annoying move. Do you have to play rook d1 here? Yes. Rook d1, because if queen take, take, and it rook d1, then eight. rook takes a2 is just yeah. catastrophic yeah. <laughs> for yeah. white. <laughs> yes. So I don't think white wants to get into that. So, But you need to protect the queen and you need to protect the pawn on d4. So I'm supposing that, yeah, rook d1. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but then... If bishop a4, bishop then you a4. can take and play rook b1. Yes. But maybe maybe you can play instead bishop b5 Let's instead. See. And rook b1, now winning the now pawn. Now it works. Now it works. But bishop b5 instead. Maybe this is yes. the move. <coughs> it threatens bishop e2 or bishop c4. Yeah, so it threatens bishop c4. And bishop e2. Yes. As we can see here on and this now screen. Now I have to play probably bishop to f1. But this is dangerous. It's disturbing this queen on b2. It's disturbing the white play. Yes. No, this idea with queen b2 is really interesting. It's really good to have this type of ideas in mind. Um, yeah. When there is a pawn on a3. So here we can see yeah. how strong the pawn on a3 has yeah. become. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. I don't really know what black wants to do because if okay take take king takes then maybe it's not really that bad but it seems like it's black that has the initiative black yes black in has initiative yes because I believe yes white never really accomplished play f5 which was the yeah. idea behind bishop h3 yes and uh, black has taken control yeah yes so should we see what Happen so rook c5. Oh, so it's yeah, so rook c5. That's the last move that has been played. Um, and you can see also black is playing very quickly this game, he's used only 20 minutes. No, yeah, 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 and, and, and white is used, yeah, more than half of the time. Yes. Yeah, 50 minutes has been played, so there's 30 minutes difference, and um. 30 minutes is quite a lot in the opening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, it's moved 21 now, but uh, still it marks a difference in uh, in the game. And is does black have to take now on c5? I like this to take, yeah. 
Because yes, such if, if I hit the rook with b6, move the queen and play b6, for instance. Yeah. But, but yeah. The queen doesn't I really have any good scores no, to go to. I don't like that so much. Yeah. So then we will see if black plays rook takes c5 and then queen b2. Yes. Maybe after rook takes c5 to stop queen b2, could it be better to take with the d pawn? Just yeah, to stop queen b2? It's possible. But okay. Queen to a6. Yeah, that's what we were saying. I was just thinking if because Queen b2 really did seem like a threat. Yes So I was thinking if this even though it's not It's not perfect. Maybe it's better than the other option. I don't know bishop f1 and bishop b5 bishop b5 coming. And Okay, um, take maybe takes yes takes Maybe this rook has to go somewhere now. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, this is maybe better than the B1 other thing. Maybe. Mm, yes. Just to, I was thinking if maybe you could play to king of two and then maybe queen e. Yeah. Queen this e two or maybe rook b three and queen d three. Yeah, this is better. This is better. Something, wait, something like maybe this. Yes. Choose, yeah. Uh, both to threaten the pawn on a3, but also to gain control of the white squares. Yeah, yeah. this is maybe better for white to play this way than the other way. Yes. That's... Um, because it did really seem like a threat, queen b2. I'm not no. sure white wants to get into that. Okay. So, have they done any moves? They haven't done any moves. Okay. No. No. Yeah, he's thinking, shall he play for b6 or take? Yeah. He's thinking of this, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Which, how to get rid of that rook on yeah. c5, yeah. Yeah. So then, but then it was interesting that he played this b4 and really took control yeah. of the c5 y square. Yeah, that was cool. No, now it is okay, yeah. Now he, mm, it's mm. okay, yeah. Okay, so we will see how this game proceeds. Maybe we should go to board number three now. Yes. Um. So, here we have... Um, Jesper Thibault from Denmark. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> he is. He's born ninety nine, I think nineteen ninety nine. So he's twenty years old. Uh huh. Ah so yes. he's also a young player. Yes. Yes. Young Nordic player, and we have the Swedish player Nikolai Tsarnutsi. Ah yes. Yeah. So let's see here. Um. Let. us go back so it's interesting that Thibaut he has he's the he's ranked number three in the tournament uh -huh. uh, so he has quite a high rating yes 2576 ah uh, yes but he's he's not a GM he's an IM ah uh, yes still yes yeah but um okay so he played d4 finally a game that's not uh -huh. French <laughs> yeah okay so d4 knight f6 okay Yes. D5. So you can play knight f3 a bit to avoid the Nimso Indian as well. Yes. Because if you played knight c3 before, then bishop b4 could. Yeah, yeah. It uh, would be the Nimso Indian. But this. Okay. Now so. We the, the Catalan. We have the Catalan here. Yes. Yeah. Bishop e7. G2. Bishop g2. Castle. Castles. D takes c. Yeah, this is all normal. This is all normal. Is it? Queen c2. Also. Yeah, okay. Queen c2 seems a6. Good. And now is a question. Hmm. Sh shall you take the pawn on c4 or to play a4? a4 is a little bit... Um, well, it becomes a little bit different from the normal variations with queen takes c4. It's, um, it gives a square on b4, but white looks for the center pawn center but black can then reach uh, uh, with the bishop or the knight to b4 and to a positional yeah. game yeah the, the only weak the only dubious piece for black is the white squared bishop his white squared bishop this one right here but yeah yeah but he played now bishop d7 that is good move this is uh, bishop d7 yes yes um 
Oh, so to take uh, to take out the bishop to, to, to develop it. Yes, he wants yeah. to come to c6 to have this diagonal without playing b6. To ha it's more positional with with um, this way. Yeah. And what happens with the c pawn? Is it supposed to play c5? C5 at some point or uh, yeah normally you want to do that in the catalan reach yeah. c5 but this line uh, if you can get out with the white square bishop and exchange them for instance exchange it for for a knight or for the white white square bishop and then play c6 also then you have uh, a solid so position somehow, yeah but no breaks in the center but otherwise c5 when you get c5 in mm, then it is good when you can get c5 in in a good way yeah and it's easy play for black also good peace play and everything yeah yes okay so uh, let's see no, because that's what I remember, that uh, c5 is normally what is played in uh, in the Catalan. Yeah. But, uh, this of course, it depends. Yes. So bishop g5 was played. Yes. This is also very typical in the Catalan. Yes. To play this. Um, bishop c6. Bishop c6. Yes. Okay, it's, it's working good. <laughs> Rook no. d1. Rook d1. And... Also, you want to kind of take control of the e4 square. Yes. Right? With, uh, well, yeah, you have both the bishop and the knight, but even if the knight was exchanged, then you have control, yes. sort of control of the e4 square. Yes? Yeah, what did he... Uh, he defends the pawn. Maybe it's possible to defend the pawn. Oh, but so he just wants to <laughs> be a pawn up, basically. But, but if he loses yeah. that pawn later on, then then now he he tries to keep the pawn yeah. instead of playing for this positional square b4 yeah he plays uh, in the in another way yeah it is, it always when you play b5 in all these type of positions it's interesting with but it's risky white gets normally good play for a pawn no yeah and, and you have this this kind of play in in more systems than the Catalan system. You, well, White plays aggressive. He plays Queen C2, yeah. Rook D1, E4, in yeah. Queen's Gambit also, yeah. these things. Yeah. And the uh, interesting positions with a hard play. It's very hard. Also, the Notaboom is another. Uh, it's another kind of position, actually, that they have. Yeah. Then they're not. This is not typical. Um, uh, Catalan when you have b5 uh, with the bishop on c6. Yes, it looks very strange. It looks yeah. a bit strange. Yes. Uh, compared to what the Catalan normally looks like. That's absolutely right. Um, but I was thinking, is b3 sometimes an idea to play as white? Also. I mean maybe not now, but I mean maybe after exchanging on b5, maybe yeah. b3 at some point. Yes. And white gains uh, good squares on the queen side for a knight. Yeah. Knight controlling later uh, c5 or a5, and, and black can maybe not play c5. And, and then white gets uh, a pressure for because a long time. Because the b5 pawn is yeah. weak. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so should we see what happened in the game? Wait, now I'm moving very... Oh, I'm... Um, going very quickly now no that's not okay mm, still moving quickly okay so b5 was played yes bishop takes f6 so white wanted to remove the the knight on f6 yes was it once again to maybe to gain control of the e4 yes square yes because maybe bishop e4 was a threat before bishop takes f6 knight c3 now we see that yeah. this is the next move of, of this move mm, I don't like. It's a, I think it's a mistake simply because of knight g5, this little tactical trick there in the position. Knight g5? Knight g5, yes. When bish bishop must take exactly. because and you take on c6 and you get the good bishop on c6 and you win back the pawn yes. and, and white has achieved the best he can have. Yes. That's abs yeah yeah absolutely, 
Uh, I mean, this bishop on yes. on C six is now a monster. Yeah, he <laughs> would win the B five pawn, yeah. and later perhaps he wins also the C four pawn. Yeah, and so then then the yeah, white is always better from now on. It's guaranteed better. Yeah, but I don't know what to do instead of knight E seven. If there was some other move, because this knight needs to develop somehow, but. Uh, of yes. course, right now there is the tactic of uh, of knight d7. Because uh, it's not possible to, m if I move the queen, you take on b5 and take on a8 and take some b5. Exactly. So if you, for instance, played queen d6, yes. then you can play take mm. on b5, take, and then yeah. take, take, and then the pawn on b5 is hanging. Yes. So, uh, so it's difficult to see how black with... Yeah continue his development and this is not how they play they play normally the positional way trying to get the bishop to c6 give back the pawn on c4 and then to place a bishop or the knight on b4 with a yeah. So maneuver yeah yes exactly a and then all pieces are standing well for black only that he doesn't have the any center but uh, the minor pieces are standing well yeah Exactly. Now we can see that, for instance, this bishop is nowhere near to coming to b4. It's on f6. Yeah, so it feels yeah. like the black pieces have gone a bit out of place. Yes, yes. Uh, so do you think that maybe this whole idea of b5 is a mistake? Yeah, yeah I, well, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it, no. Not your preference <laughs> in the <laughs> Catalan, <laughs> <laughs> against the Catalan. Because, uh, yeah, if I... If the bishop, the ideal position would be if the bishop was on b7 and you have knight on d7, then, then you could play even a move like c6 and then develop the queen to b6 or c7 and yeah. then later c5 to play for c5. Something like this. But that's many moves, many extra moves. Yeah, yeah. but that's the plan. That's yeah, a yeah. way of developing the black pieces. Yes, but... Uh, it, I think it went wrong. He saw that, yeah, he has to play knight d7 yeah. and then to struggle in this difficult position now yeah. after knight g5. This is a very nice tactic, yes. tactical move. Yes. Threatening, of course, the mate on h7, uh, but also the bishop on c6. Yes. So, uh, of course, white can't, black cannot exchange the bishop because of the mate. So, uh, black is forced to take on yeah. g5. Yes. And then white can get the bishop on c6 and yeah this this looks this looks difficult for black yes uh, because as you said before the pawns that are on the white squares they are all very weak right now yes and white will gain back one or two pawns even yes yes so uh, because the c4 pawn will be very weak yes. after gaining the b5 pawn yes so um yeah basically so um White has uh, had an initiative with this. Well, he remains with initiative for some time now. Yeah. We so shall see if Black can somehow consolidate later on. Yeah. We shall see. Yeah. We will see. So Black played Rook B8, of course, very n normal. And White gained the pawn. Yes. And as we can see once again, I mean, the pawn on C4, it's just very yeah. weak right now. Yes, yes. Um, so, black tried to, um, or black defended the pawn with knight b6. Yes. And e4 was played. So, gaining, gaining center. Yeah, he's trying for some uh, uh, more uh, active play, but many times, uh, in this maybe, I don't know if black had some idea to self himself playing for e5 mm. not in right like this but mm, coming but otherwise mm, i prefer pawn to e3 just to hold the center and then to maneuver with the pieces minor pieces maybe and to win the c pawn yeah but uh, I then it can be opposite colored bishops on the board if, if the knights are yeah, exchanged yeah yeah one idea is to to move the bishop and to play 
night A7 and night to C6. Exactly, yeah. I, I was looking at that because the C6 square yeah. is very weak. Yes, Now yes. that there is no bishop. Yes. Uh, a white squared bishop for black that can yeah, control yes. it. Yes. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe... Okay, I'm not sure actually right now. I was thinking that maybe you could even ga play bishop e4 Ma to uh, gain... Maybe this first to win a tempo that way. Gave win a tempo threatening threatening on h7 yeah. and then after and then knight a7 knight a7 i'm not yeah. sure because f5 it doesn't really seem like a move that black wants to play no after bishop e4 yeah because um i mean the e6 pawn becomes yes so so, so here yeah black is playing with the uh, problems he will suffer he will suffer i think it but um, if he can get out of this everything with the pawn down opposite colored bishops with some mm, minor piece major yeah major piece with um, with queen or with rooks and and to fight for draw that way that yes. is that is probably the best black has the best chance for yeah, black yes but white maybe if he gets a knight to c6 maybe he stands there only trying to improve more and yeah. then coming with the pawns yeah to push the pawns in the center and so on so yeah white doesn't have to uh, exchange the knight no no it is mm, for instance if we if we take both knights we take off both knights yeah and we take off the c4 pawn yeah, so let's imagine that these three pieces yeah. are taken away a white now. White wins the pawn, but then black will probably try to put the bishop on d6. Then he yeah. controls a little bit and queen e7. And uh, so, yeah. A and then it's not so easy to make use of this extra pawn on b2, no? Because the pawn on c7 will be very protected. Yes. By yeah. both the bishop and the yeah, queen. Yes. Yeah. A and um, in that case it means that you have to push on the king side with f4, e4 and so on. But then, yeah, this become another type of game then. And then we have, as we said before, maybe perpetual checks <laughs> yeah. in an <laughs> endgame. Yeah. So that's the because problem with that as well. It's <laughs> often, yeah, <laughs> of the king. Yeah. But black is... <coughs> but I think we can say that black is fighting in order to get the draw. He has to fight in order to get the draw. So to play well in order to get the draw. Yeah. Yeah. So after knight d7, that's maybe what black has to. After knight d7 and knight g5. Yes. Maybe, as you said, black just is just playing good to make a draw. Yes. Yes. Or yeah, trying to make a draw at least. So because it's very difficult. But let's see what happened because there has been. There have been some moves that have been played. So let's go. So knight takes g5, bishop takes c6, rook b8, take, 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 knight b6. And e4, yeah, that was the move that we said that maybe e3 could also e be yeah, another yes. move to consolidate the position. Yes. Queen e7. Ah, oh, it's coming like this. Oh, and now all the pieces are... Yes. He wants, yeah. You. Because, yeah, because now we don't have the bishop on d6. No. As as you said before. The bishop here is a bit... The bishop is uh, kind of out of play, no? Yeah. Somehow it doesn't, mm, it doesn't do anything I yet. No, late. Maybe it's to come back via h6, g6, bishop to g7 or f8 and so but but uh, this black has no own play in this yeah. position uh, it's to yeah just to fight for for draw yes so uh but yeah but the c7 pawn is very weak right now yes um but yeah you're right because i mean if a move like for example for instance i don't know h4 in yeah. this position yes. then maybe bishop h6 and then g6 could be a plan and bishop e g7 yes yes okay but let's see so I knight see c8 it. okay ah it's not uh -huh. I have to take the pawn the rook becomes what happens here a bit strange yeah queen d8 probably yeah and now queen d8 and then now w black is threatening to take on b5 yes because after take the rook is hanging oh yes sorry the rook is hanging 
Okay, so maybe the rook doesn't have so many squares to go to in yeah, this position. Yeah, I don't know where. Uh, if I play rook d7, but queen b6 perhaps. Yeah. Of course, after queen, uh, queen a8, the knight c7, and it's trapped. Or queen a5, I don't know. Queen b6 or queen a5. Or queen b6. Yeah. Hmm. It would be nice if this, um, if the rook on d1 could come to a1 somehow. Yes. And sort of help out the rook on, on d7. Yeah. But um, it's not really possible right now, of course. And now this knight is hanging, so uh, white has to protect it, protect it somehow. I'm maybe. Not sure if uh -huh. Knight d6, maybe? Yes. Or uh, maybe if it should go back to c3, I'm not sure. Hmm. But he went back to a2 with the rook. Yeah, he didn't want to get into no, this position. Th this is becomes a little bit complicated, so to say. So yeah. he keeps uh, the safe thing with rook on a2. But then knight c8 was interesting. Yes, yes. As good, a way good, to defend. Good move. It's a good move, yes. Yeah. So rook a2 was played and knight d6. So now this knight uh, went no, from... He's and and uh, yeah. yeah. Went from b6 to d6, which might be a better square yes. for it. So, uh, but okay, now black is giving up his c4 pawn. Yes. If white wants to take it. Yes. Uh, because after take, take, the c4 pawn is hanging. Is it the actual position, this? Yeah, this is the position. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is where we're at right now. Move 19. Because now we see that the pawn on there on e4 it would be uh, nicer to have it on e3 i think because the mm. bishop has uh, the diagonal in order to come back also had yeah. better mm, better control on the position yeah if the pawn was on e3 instead then perhaps yeah. the bishop well yeah the bishop would have some much a, a lot longer diagonal yeah so uh, because i mean for instance rook b6 might be yes a bit of a a bit of a problem maybe yes and okay, of course, now the knight is, the knight is threatened. So, question is, does white want to take the c4 pawn after, because perhaps after a position like this, the rook might get activated on the c file? Ah, uh, yes. Sorry. Yes, it is, yeah, mm, like it's, mm, what should I say, reasonable, he gets, reasonable offer to come <laughs> out from this position somehow yeah he, yeah to get away with it somehow because well, I, I, uh, I think the idea that mm -hmm. we were speaking about before to put the knight on c6 yeah would be the most uh, disturbing thing to go back with bishop play knight a7 and knight to c6 for white no? yeah so to go to knight a7 and yeah, remove the bishop and play knight c6. Yeah. But can white play knight a7 now then? And threaten I e5? Uh, maybe maybe that is possible. To keep some tension Yes. on the board. That could be, yes, that is, yeah, that, that move I like. Knight a7 looks good, yes, looks good. Because yeah, this is good. It's the the only move that maybe disturbs. Yeah. Yes. Because if White gets to play e5 now, the knight doesn't have so many places to go to either. But okay, maybe after e5, maybe should White uh, Black go back uh, to uh, c8? He goes back. He goes back. Yeah. He goes back to c8, and then this knight is simply. I mean. Has to either be exchanged or go back to b5. Or okay, it can yeah. stay there as well, but um, we don't have time to play knight c6. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's <laughs> what we want to play. Yeah. We want to find a way to play knight c6. Hmm. Okay, I was thinking if maybe e5 could be played before. Yes. Somehow. Yes. But um. 
Oh, yeah. 987 was played actually. Uh, he played, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's good, yeah. But now 98, he should go back. Yeah. Before the bishop can. Before the bishop has time to move. Yes, yes. Hmm. But okay, if the knight goes back, then the c4 pawn is. So let's put it like yes. this. The c4 pawn is hanging, and this time the c file is not open anymore. It is true. That is true. So the c file, well, the. White is. Pawn is blocking. Advantage in any case. But, but still, always a chance for draw with opposite color bishops always uh, uh, it exists no sometimes yeah. uh, drawish positions but uh, yeah that's what we were talking about before that white maybe doesn't want to exchange the white the the knight yeah but uh but this way some maybe perhaps black is able to exchange the knight yes but here yeah he takes a pawn and then and then he can play on just and see what will happen yeah if see what happens yeah <laughs> hope yeah. for the best yeah i don't know maybe also because the queen is on e7 i'm not sure if after queen c4 if so if queen was going to go to c4 at some point if maybe rook b4 uh, also yes could maybe activate the rooks and then quickly play yeah. rook b8 to play just and and to yeah yeah black is not out in the game. He can he can yeah. struggle. Now it's easier to struggle this way because mm, without the knights, mm, yeah, white had less things to disturb it. The knight on c6 would really be like a bone in the throat. Yeah, 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 <laughs> really disturbing, disturbing <laughs> much more than the bishop on c6. That's <laughs> a good way to put it. A bone in <laughs> a <th> yeah, <laughs> bone in the throat. Yeah, that's exactly what it would be. So. Uh, yeah, so yeah, th so then black wants to exchange the knights, of course. So we will see if black manages to do so. Yeah. Um, okay, I was thinking that maybe we should take a little break yeah. before we well, both go on to some more games and then also go back to the first three boards that we were looking at. Yes. Because I'm guessing that a lot of things have happened since, yeah, we, yeah. since we left. Uh, okay, yeah, so should we yeah. take a little break? Y yes. Yes, and back. we'll be back in five minutes. Ja. Jag har jobbat riktigt bra. Ja, vad bra. Ja, det är fint. Det går, jag tycker det går jättebra. Ja, det är jättekul. Man blir verkligen ja, inne för tiden. Det ser riktigt bra ut. Ja, vad bra. Jag vet hur mycket folk sitter och kommer här bara i rummet också. Det är det. Ja, vad kul. Det känns inte som det när man sitter här liksom. Ja. Ja. Ta en välkörkänd paus tycker jag. Ja, jag måste springa på toa. Ja. Det, det är liksom, jag har inte någon tagg eller någonting, så det är liksom, ni känner ni redo så att säga. Ja. Så. Hämta lite mer vatten kanske. Ja, just det. Är det här ute man gör det? Ja, precis. Ja. 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 Ja.
Okay, so we're back from the break now and ready to look at some more games. Um, I was thinking that we could maybe look at some of the junior players yes. that are playing in this tournament. Yeah. Um, some of the Swedish junior players. Yes. Um, because there are quite a few uh, Swedish juniors playing here, which is really fun to see yeah. them playing in yeah. Rilton Cup. So, um, one that I saw was Leo Leo Krevatin. Uh -huh. um, and he's playing against a Cuban player. I'm sh yeah, against a Cuban player. So he's playing against Luis Ernesto Quesada Perez. Yes, I I know the name Quesada. This uh, L yeah, yeah, I know the name. Yeah. He's a strong player. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a Cuban grandmaster. Yes, yes. So of course he's a very strong player. Um, and Leo, he is 18 years old. He just uh, turned uh -huh. 18 years old <laughs> yeah. a few days ago, actually. <laughs> so uh, now he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's really it's really fun for young players to be able to play against so strong, yeah, so strong players. Yes. To be able to play against against grandmasters, that's really really fun. Yeah, yeah. So okay, um, so now they've come quite far, but. Once again, we could just check maybe a bit quickly what happened. And the Cuban player plays Benone, very sharp. Yeah, very sharp. A dangerous opening, yes. So knight f3. Here there are, there are many moves, right? You can also play e4 in this position. It's another yes. variation. Yes. yes. But yeah, of course, there are many moves here. Knight f3. G6. Bishop f4, yes. Hmm? A6 to because black mm. wants to play B5. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <coughs> A4. Yes. To stop B5, Bishop G7. E3 castle. Is this all normal? Yes, it's not. But but this is <coughs> a little bit different from the uh, shall I say the normal. Benone. Normal Benone, white has a pawn on e4. Yeah. Uh, but now white plays the same position without the pawn on e4. He plays with pawn on e3. Hmm. And uh, so he doesn't need to defend the pawn on e4 all the time. It's so that's the advantage with it, that it's not weak, the yeah, pawn on e4. Yes. Yeah. There's no weakness hanging on e4. It's an interesting idea to play like this. It is a theory, theoretical line also. And but uh, interesting theoretical line, I would say, yeah. Are there any Are disadvantages the with placing the pawn on e3 instead? Uh, well, the thing is, in the normal Benoni, so to say, then you can play for e4, e5, the break, mm, yeah. very aggressive. But so here e4. white is not aggressive. He just consolidates the position well yeah. and, um, and slow play and, and has a reasonable position. Black is not hitting anything. He is uh, on e4, the, which is the always the main idea for black to hit the pawn on e4 yeah. and to have counterplay with on the queen side. Yeah. And now it is uh, now it is different. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Taking a well white has taken away a few of the ideas of black. Yeah. Yes. You could say. Yeah. Yes. So let's see what happens. Bishop, uh -huh, G4. Bishop g4. Yes. And uh, okay. Mm. What is the idea with with bishop g4? Is it, is it just to be able to play knight d7 and knight e5? Or okay, that was. No, these yes. were very very wrong. <laughs> this <Yeah. laughs> arrows, but um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you want to get rid of this white squared bishop because it has mm, normally a few squares to go to in after the opening so if you can exchange it for the knight it is not bad okay not bad okay yeah because from c8 it doesn't really have a lot of squares the yes. white squared yeah, bishop yes. and the knight on b8 needs to be developed as yes. well yes okay i just uh, i always think that <laughs> for instance i mean maybe not now but uh, you know if h3 is played and yeah, h3 take is always cool. take that or h3 take and take i always find that this bishop just controls a lot of squares from f3 yes. 
yeah. and that then yeah. it's easier to play. But then, of course, with the knight on d7, it's hard to play e5 at some point. Yes. So then you can play on the queen side for white, and and the bishop is um, with the pawn on e3. The bishop somehow is on f3 is s stronger with the pawn on e3 than with the pawn on e4. Yeah, e exactly. So yeah, so yeah, so that's interesting that the bishop becomes strong in f3. Uh, but okay, as you said, black needs to devel develop the bishop somehow, so maybe this is the best way to do it. So castle, rook e8. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, so white wants to keep the knight. Yes. And exchange the bishop instead. Yes, because it's a good square on c4 for the knight. If the knight can come to c4, with the with the com combined with bishop on f4, it's disturbing d6 very much, yeah. and then then that's a kind of position where uh, if black doesn't play well, that white can get a winning position almost very mm. quickly. So black has to play some good moves in order to avoid this this position. Yeah, because then black maybe needs to play bishop f8 to defend yeah. on d6. Then it's already little bit wrong when yeah. one has to begin to defend there with bishop f8 okay so let's see take take knight h5 ah, that is a that's a good move I because now it's possible to exchange that knight for the bishop yeah but now it would be good to have your move h3 in then the bishop could retreat to exactly. h2 if bishop, if, if the pawn was in h3, then white could play bishop h2. Now the bishop doesn't have any squares. No, uh, that is true. To go to, so black will be able to exchange. Yes. The the knight for the bishop. So uh, and that's sort of like a little accomplishment for black. Yes. One could say yes. maybe, uh, because that stops white from doing the plan that we we're talking about with knight c4 threatening on d6. Yes. So. Um, Okay, so bishop g3. And take and take. And now these pawns there on the king side, they are very nice somehow. They all st stand well. G3, G2, F2, E3. Like a mess. <laughs> <laughs> there. Yeah. Yes. Pawn yeah. mess. That's controlling, defending the white king. Yeah. And, and white now probably should play only with the pieces in order on the on the king side queen side not on the king side because it'd be weakening the king just yeah and playing g4 and yeah. stuff would just weaken the queen yeah. the a and the bishop on g7 <coughs> is is very strong hmm. very strong and black will now try to use the the queen side majority in his favor and white has to do something against that yes so see what he can yes, find yes that's that's very true it's really interesting because, <laughs> well, at least when <laughs> when I was starting to play chess, yes, um, when I was younger, I always used to think that this was a weakness for white to have uh -huh. the pawns in this sort of mess in front of the ah game. Yeah. No, but it is quite good. But it is quite <laughs> yes. good. <laughs> Be yeah. Because here, to if you white will play e4 in yeah. such position, then the bishop becomes even stronger because has a d4 square as well. Exactly. That would be the best bishop. Maybe yeah, in the world, yeah. To H6, even. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Yeah, yes. So this really fits with the E3 move that yeah, Leo played. Yeah, yes. <coughs> okay, so. Knight E7, yes. Knight C4. C4. And uh, I was thinking moves like. Okay, this looks very natural. This bishop is very good on g7, but I was just wondering... Oh no, that would just... Be I was just wondering how a position ah, like yes. this... Yes. ...would be. But I, I, I guess that this pawn, the pawn on b5, would maybe just be very weak. Yeah, after. well, it's hanging on d6. Oh, it's right hanging now. on d6 as well, yeah. But if we defend this d6 first... Yeah. ...with the... Queen C seven, but uh, but then maybe a will it be yeah Queen C seven 
uh, black wants to have B5 in, but it's difficult. He cannot get it in the in the way he wants, I yeah. think. Maybe a rook needs to go to B8 first yeah. somehow. Yes. For that to be possible. But the knight on the C4 is very strong. Very strong, yeah. Very good knight there. Yes. Yeah. No, so he so wants to exchange that knight black then with knight E5. It's uh, understandable. Yeah. And trying for G5. B B five in an in another way here. Mm. Yeah, no, because you usually say this, right? That the the C four square for a knight is sort of like a magical square. Yes, a bit like yes. a bit like F five as well. Yes, for the yeah. knight when yes. it's uh, when it can stay there, then it's yes, then it's really a really good square. Yeah. Um, for instance, here the bishop on G seven is better than the knight on C three. Yeah, it is stronger. So if white could get the uh, changing these knights and then to bring the other knight to c4 somehow or to to a better square, white would have a, an advantage. But uh, I, I don't know in this moment when the the bishop is very good, yeah, very strong. A5. Mm -hmm. But then comes b5. Yeah, this is okay. B5. B five, yeah. Because he ad otherwise knight B six would come, and this this he has to do. He has to take on on C four. Yes, 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 I think so. Yes, otherwise knight B six might come. So. Um, and to play for B five in one moment. But A five does that? Yeah. It, it. I was thinking because maybe it kind of um, because now. It was preventing the pawn on a4 was preventing black from playing b5. E yes. But after a5, then b5 is not yeah, so bad. Yeah, that is true. It is true. Maybe white could do something else here than a5. Yes. Yes. Do you think so as well that maybe a5 is a bit? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it allows b5 at least. I'm not sure how good that is, but um, we will see in the game. This. So. Yeah. And b5 now. B5. Yes. So now this move is is played well, the the best would be for black of course if he could play b5 and to recapture when white takes sang pasang to recapture with the rook mm. he has to take with the queen now in yeah. order not to, because a rook there was would be better than the and then you double on the b line let's say with a Queen to b8, b7, rook b4. You have more yeah, disturbing fantastic. things. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And yes. the b2 pawn is very weak y as well. Yes. Now the queen is uh, standing uh, away in, in a way f for the rooks. No, queen yeah. on b6 is a little bit Wait. disturbing for himself. No, it's not. Yeah. It should be uh, now also a rook on e8. Uh, doesn't make any sense anymore on E8 because it's nothing on the E line, nothing to attack. Yeah. Uh, it, it would be different if the pawn was on E4, then it would be good. But now the rook should be on B8 in order to exactly, play yeah. there, yes. But maybe black can play something like this at some point, or is it maybe just to. Maybe yeah. it just takes just takes but too yeah. much time. Yeah, but he can sh maybe he loses the a six pawn. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm not sure really. Yeah. But now he needs to I take, have to on take B6. back there. You have to take back. Yes. You have to take back and rook a two. Rook a two, yes, is good also. It is good. Yeah, to both um, protect the pawn on b two, but also to maybe double the rooks. Yes. And threaten a6. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. And now queen, queen b4. Before. Queen d3. Yeah. He has to go with the queen. He cannot play the end game. It is dangerous. This position. Yeah. Yes. This is. The knight. Maybe the knight. Knight is no good squares. And. Yeah, Ooh. and then oh, maybe B three as well is uh, okay. Maybe not now, but at some point it could. Yeah, uh, yes, it could be dangerous. Yeah, no, and the C file as well to go back with them. So, Queen D three. Normally, with Black, you get such a good bishop, but in in this Benon, but then you have the pawns on H six and G five. 
On A6. And G5, which is weaker. It yeah. is much better as it is now on H7, G6. Yeah. But that is the way that you get like the, the get the white's bishop normally with H6, G5, knight H5. Mm. But here, black didn't need to lose time for this even. So it's even better he, for he black. It's even better. He, he got it in the best version. Yeah. So if a5... Yeah, and black wants to push this pawn as well. It's always good yeah. to have this pawn pushed. Yes, yes. Rook there. C two H five. It's in order to have air for the king. Just I think I don't think it's idea is H four not yet, but it's more to have air for the king. Yeah, so that the bishop never has to go to F eight if there were some checks on yeah. the eighth rank. Yes. Knight E four. Mm -hmm. Threaten the D six pawn. Yes. C four. C four. Mm, rook a4, okay, yes. disturbing a little bit the queen. Oh, and now the queen took on b2. Ah, uh, yes, and queen c4. Yes. Ah, this is, in yeah, this is interesting. This is very interesting. Because now, okay, the pawn on a5 is a bit weak. Yes. But, um, but black has control of the of the H eight A one diagonal. Yes. So I wonder if he can take on A one twice, but it will be queen against two rooks. Hmm. But the knight will jump in on D six and uh, white must so have quick like attack, otherwise he will lose. So this is what we are talking about. Yeah. This position. And then yes. And then he must attack f7, get some counter play because some the a queen the a pawn is running, no? Yeah. The a pawn, yeah. Oh yeah, the a pawn. <laughs> the yeah. a pawn will just <laughs> will just push and push. Yeah. And or it will be pushed and pushed until until it promotes. So yeah, white needs to attack f7, which will be the weak point. Yes. Here, maybe with queen c7 or perhaps queen f4. Yes. I'm not really sure, but uh, somehow attack f7. Yes. Definitely. So, um, okay. So this is where we're at right now, at queen takes c4. I'm not sure if... What do you think about a move like... Uh, okay, so black can now take a1, of course. So now that's probably what black is thinking about, if black yeah. wants to take. I was thinking of a, a move like rook c8. Uh huh. Trying to play rook c2. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And maybe disturb a bit on f2 yes, as well? Yes, yes, that could be an idea. Maybe. Um, yeah, well, where is the queen going after rook c8? Queen to. Yeah. It doesn't have so many squares to go to. Maybe to a2? Maybe a2, yes. After. Yeah, so after, wait, sorry, after rook c8, maybe queen a2, yes. because then you can take on a1. Sorry, it, uh, you, oh, you just take on a1 you right away. You can just away. take on a1. Yeah, yeah, that is right, that is so right. So yeah, the question is, where does the queen go? Yeah, where, yeah, where should we go with the queen there, where? Seems like maybe D3 is the D3 only, yes. or F1, I'm not sure, but yes. D3 seems natural. So, let's see. So if rook C8 and queen D3. Yes. Perhaps. And now, okay, so D6 is hanging. But then... Yeah. Maybe rook c2 to prevent rook b1 Yes. Uh, as well from coming and also perhaps prevent knight takes d6 yes. as f2 is hanging. Y yes, yes. 
maybe. Yeah, they, yeah, that is interesting. Interesting idea. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. So then maybe this is what the what Luis is thinking about. Yeah. If he should try to get some material advantage with oh, with uh queen takes a1 yes. and to exchanging the queen for two rooks or if he um or if he wants to play something like this and simply get initiative. Yes. Instead. Yes. Did he play rook c8? Maybe he played no. No, he's it's thinking. And uh -huh. it's he's thinking, yeah. Yes. So we can see that Leo has 20 minutes left. So, um, okay, st he does have 15 moves. So it's. But it's an interesting yeah, position. 44 minutes. Yeah, yes. It's very interesting because there yes. are two different types of ideas that Black can go for. Yeah. Now. Okay, so maybe we should go back to the first three games that we were looking at. Yeah. Because. Let's do so. Yeah. But this was a really interesting game, actually. Yeah, yes. From Leo. Okay, so let's go back to board one. It's been a while. Ah, yes. Dimitri Colors against Elham Abritlauf. And this looks very different from where we left off. So uh. let's see where we were at. So. No, this is a lot after, right? So where, oh yeah, we were C4. We saw a castle mm -hmm. and he took here. Yes. Take, take, and this is when we saw that bishop takes b5 does not work because of yes uh, because of queen d5, and then there is both mate being threatened and um, and the bishop. So that didn't work. So he oh mm -hmm. instead he took diagonal. So I took the pawn, uh -huh. allowing knight c6. Yeah, well then, white sacrificed the pawn in order to get the knight to c6. And, and uh, yeah, white has definitely compensation for it. Maybe white can even be better in such p type of position. Because now if, um, well, when the queen, after knight c6, we can say that was probably the move that was played. And the a pawn is a dangerous pawn in the future. Yeah, knight c6 was played. I was thinking maybe, yeah. yeah, bishop g5. Yes. That is good also. Yeah. Keeping In this position here, is there any... Di would this be any different uh -huh. somehow? Or yes. to uh. stop black from playing knight d5 or... Maybe he can play c c5, things like that, no? Okay, maybe c5 here. Maybe something like that. Hmm. Okay, and yeah, it's not really and so problematic maybe that he gets these double pawns on the, the king side. Yeah. Because it's hard for, for white to attack somehow. It so. should be a, at least, uh, yeah, he should be able to draw the game, no? Yeah. But... Um, but he played bishop yeah, d5 yeah. immediately. Yes. Ah, because he wants to keep the knight. Yeah, yeah, this is good. He keeps blocked there. Then later he plays b4, and um, he has a uh, protected pass pawn on a5. That's very strong for white, very good. But um, white is, has sacrificed one pawn on the king's side in order to get this, because the the, the two pawns on the queen side for black, they are harmless. Yeah. But if he can be able to get c5 in, so in order to exchange some things later, th that would be the best idea. But but even with, <coughs> with the pawn down in the in the rook end game that they have now, that is it is a little bit dangerous position for for black hmm. because of that strong pawn on a5. Very strong pass pawn there to play positional. If he can bring a king to c5 with a pawn on b4, the king to c5. Yeah, if White can bring his king to c5. Yeah. In in the rook end game. Yeah. And then then the b5 is weak. Plus he is closed to his pass pawn there on a5. Yeah. It would be very dangerous for for Black that because it's difficult to. 
to do anything with the four pawns on the king's side against these three. It's difficult to do anything. Mm. When he moves them, it will be more weakness, weakness in the position for black, even maybe helping white to penetrate on the on the king's side then if he needs to. And um, yeah, 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 of course, because that yeah. creates squares for the yeah, better to white wait and too. see, try to hold. Yeah, to hold. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's really interesting that uh, you can sacrifice a pawn like that and it can be even good during yeah. end games. Yes. Because yeah. that's not something normally you think that in end games it's even more important to have material. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes it's the, the, the king, king is more important. Yeah, the king will be very strong. Very, very strong. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's really good to think about. Um Okay, but that was really good of why to to block the C pawn then from yeah. moving. That's the most important because if Black would be able to get C five, C four in, yeah. or just C five, and then he will be able to exchange something against the A pawn there later on. Maybe he will lose both pawns, but win the A pawn or something like this, and yeah. then White will have one B pawn and three other pawns, and Black has four king side pawns, but he. And to make air just for the king to play h6 of air and then just to play around with the heavy pieces there yeah. and to hold the game. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's definitely a long term plan. Yes. Um, so let's see what happened. Knight takes c6. Yeah, this is queen takes. Queen takes. And why is it that it's better to take with the queen instead of the rook? Oh, because the c7 pawn is, uh, would ah, be hanging yeah, then. Yeah, probably this is, yeah, in order to have the king in play, yeah. th then he must change the queens. Of course. If he wants to play f with the have king yeah. as a good piece, yeah. Okay, good. So, like this, and now he has time to a b4. Yeah, yeah very good, yeah. Very, very good positional move. Yes, yes. And now he can also move the rook on a1. Yes. Uh, because yeah. the a5 pawn is protected, so it's a pr protected yeah. passed pawn. Very strong pawn. Very, very strong pawn. Yes. Okay. King there is good also. Yeah, he needs to move the king. Ah, uh, yeah. Rook c1. Keeping. Uh, this rook to see. Uh, he wants to win, win the pawn. Yeah, this is probably also okay. Yeah. yeah. It always feels nice to win a pawn <laughs> back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the only way to protect this pawn now is to play rook b7. Uh, but okay, then. I don't know. Yeah, maybe just a6. Maybe a6. Yes. Simply. Because what does he do now? Does he go back? That seems very sad. And then this. Yes. This just seems. Yes. Very, very strong for white. Yeah, very strong. Yes. Very strong. So black has really big problems here. Yes. In this position. Well, is this the last position? Okay, he played uh, the king. King uh, d7 and uh -huh. uh, yeah. So yeah, we can that's say that's good cool to d7. bring the king close to the pawns there. Yeah. And this is right now. But of course, the... I mean, White also needs to bring his king. Yeah, he will come with the king to the queen side also, uh, and then, yeah, just to make keep Black uh, pass him, no, and then he will little by little, gradually, he will, will then win the game, I suppose. But, uh, but with some technique, no, Black must try to put up some good defense with the rooks now to have something. But I don't, I don't see what. To do, uh, I really don't see how to play. Yeah. Yeah. You do. You ha do you have any ideas of of the defense that Black could use? Maybe Rook A8 and Rook B8, but maybe something like this is possible. Okay, because I mean the C7 pawn it's stopping the B4 pawn at least, and the C7 pawn is protected by the king. Yes. So then the rook needs to stop the a pawn. Yes. And the question is if he manages to do so. 
Yeah, it's difficult to see how black shall play here. Yeah. It's an awkward position. Do you think that white is already winning in this position? I'm, I'm not sure yet, but if, if we can find some good defense or not, but it's, uh, it has to be really good. Otherwise, uh, white is winning, yeah, yes. So we will see if Elham finds a it's really good defense. Uh -huh. We will see if Elham, yeah. the, yeah. the, the player that is playing the black pieces, yes. finds a really good defense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that will be interesting to see. We can see that he only has 10 minutes left almost. Yeah, this is so difficult. It's not it's easy with so little time. He's really either. trying right now to find a way to defend this position. Yeah. yeah. But um, it seems like there has been a move played. Yes, he's ah, six. He played C six now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Question is, where does the white? That is maybe a good move. For, for instance, if if rook b six, then it's possible to play c five. I think. Mm, of course, because if you take, then the uh, the a five pawn is hanging. Yeah. So. And yeah, and if he plays rook c5, the other rook to c5 uh, after c6. Oh, sorry. Yeah, rook c5. Maybe this move. Yeah. Maybe also to kind of threaten b5. Yeah, maybe a bit. Maybe or just to keep it like this and to bring mm. the king to to C3 or to uh, A4 or something like this, or to B3, and then just to keep this, because black cannot move the king side pawns, it would be weak. And, and um, how to attack the B4 pawn? Or if you attack the B4 pawn twice, rook B7, and then let's say king F1, Rook b8, I, if we take on c6, take on there. And then rook c7, check. King cannot go, must go there. But then we take and play a6 and winning. Because the seventh right, if the king was, would be on f6. Uh, Here we can see that this move would win. Yeah, because of this check, yes. the next move cannot really prevent it. But if the king could reach f6 yes. before, then uh, of course it should be quite easy draw, I think. But it's very, because the king is here, he doesn't really have time to go to f6. No, this is the thing. That's the problem. Yes. Hmm. So after rook c5, it's hard to see what black can do yes. here. Because this rook is trapped a bit with the king here, but I mean, the king cannot really go anywhere. No. It's not really doing anything. And why do we slowly bring the king to the queen side to improve? You have to have the king on the queen side, and then he can use the uh, one rook or both rooks for other things, no? Yeah. If, if he can get, let's say, double on the D line with the king on c4 for instance yeah if it gets king to c4 and double rooks on the d line then you penetrate and will exchange one rook or something and then the a pawn will be decisive or you win the pawns on the queen's king side yeah white can win the pawns on the king side there. that's what i was going to ask you because um you were talking about how it's really important for the black pawns to not move yes but what happens then if uh, white starts to attack the black pawns and the black pawns have to move yeah, if black pawns have to move, then then they, they, they each is easier to catch. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so then the king can uh, can get into. Yeah, it's like uh, the, the cat is waiting for the mouse to yes. come <laughs> out. <laughs> so maybe take it. maybe the cat should chase the mouse a little bit. Yeah, then. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking like I don't know maybe. Okay, I'm not sure now, but if you would play at some point after. Putting the king. Yes. I don't, or maybe, maybe I don't know. If, if rook g4, for example. Yes. Then yes. you would slowly but surely force the pawns to yeah, move. Yeah, if you can force them, then I think that's good for white when you can force. Yeah, yeah. yes. Definitely. Okay. 
Uh, has there been any more? No. So this is the position still. So uh, yes. we will see what where White puts his w his rook. But what about playing? Can you play rook g5 now? And after g6, play rook c5 and then have the same position with the pawn on g6? Uh, uh, maybe even better. Yes, yes. Perhaps. Yes, that is good. That is good. Yeah. I think it looks very good for white, this. Yeah, because then there is this f6 square uh, as well uh, that we have gained, or that white has gained yes, control over. Yes, yes. So um, maybe that could be an idea as well. Yes, yes. It looks good, yeah. Okay, so it will be interesting to follow this end game. Should we go to the next game? Okay. Johan Ferhoff against Sergei Volkov. So here there has been a lot of oh things that have happened as well. So let's go back. Um, oh, so this was the other French yes. defense. Oh, this is when we were talking. Oh, uh, yeah. So we uh, were at rook c5. That was the last move that we yeah. saw. Yes. And we thought that black would exchange on c5, perhaps, but... But, uh, he, but he took later with the d pawn, which is right, yeah. yeah. So we will get to that, but first he played bishop b5 here. Yes. Uh, to gain control over the white squares. S maybe he wants to play bishop c4. Yes. Ah, yes, that is a good move. Bishop c4. Good. Yes, yes. Yeah. That is very good. Putting some pressure on a2, but also um, not allowing white to double the rooks on the c file. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. F5. Oh, uh -huh. so now there's some counterattack on the king side. No, yeah, he has to do something like this. Uh, finally, the bishop on h3 had some <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of <laughs> sense. Finally. <laughs> finally. Uh, he gets it in play. Yes, this is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> he takes f5. Okay. Bishop takes f5 and rook takes c5. So now he took on yeah, c5. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were talking before about that if he takes, if he plays b takes c5, then black might have the idea of playing queen b2 at some point. Yeah, yes. So white decided to take with the d pawn instead to not allow that. Yeah. And maybe to threaten the d5 pawn a bit. Yes. So. Yeah, now I, it, it doesn't look so bad for white, no? It mm. looks playable, yeah. Definitely, and there's some h7 things, yeah. uh, things, but <laughs> h7 is a bit threatened as well. Yeah. But the only danger for white is if he will lose the a2 pawn. If white, if black can keep play, you can say a2. That is the only weakness, actually, uh, for white right now. The only weak spot, yeah. Otherwise, um, yeah, he he can be good in the position also. Yeah. No, yeah, because if the if White loses the h2 pawn, then the a3 pawn becomes very strong. Yes. It would be, I mean, yeah, decisive almost. Yes. Yeah, yes. Definitely. So, uh, but now we can see at least that the White Bishop looks a bit brighter <laughs> than yeah, it looked yeah, yeah. <laughs> back on h3. So. Okay, queen c6, uh -huh, Yes. Uh, defending the d5 pawn. Okay, uh, so... Yeah, good, looking for uh, to break with e6 with some attack. Yeah, that yeah. would definitely give some attack yeah, this chances is for white. Yeah, it's good. So rook e8. Yes. Queen c3. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now when the rook has... Oh, this is really interesting. Once the rook has left the a, the a file, yes. then the queen is coming to attack the a3 pawn. Yeah, if he can get rid of that pawn, then there is no real danger for white anymore, yeah? Yeah, because now the rook cannot really go back to defend it, because then e6 is coming, which, yeah. could, be, which could be quite dangerous. Yes. So, okay, uh, so... Queen a6, a6. Uh -huh. looks natural. Rook e3, yeah, good. Maybe to double with the queen on e1? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, also okay, he's also threatening, also of course. Yeah, he has two ideas. Two ideas. Uh-huh. G5. 
G6. G6, yeah, this school to have heir for the king, and bishop has to decide where to go to. We always good to have some air. Oh, there are many G6. moves happening right now. <laughs> we can uh, see here in the live that they're yeah. been playing. Uh, been he's played all pushing time. him back there with H5 as well. Okay, uh -huh. so black is getting a bit of initiative. But now, if he can get late E6 in, and then the king side is very weak for black. Extremely and weak. And he's open, yeah, yeah. The G6 pawn especially, without the F7 pawn, yeah. the G6 pawn will be extremely weak. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, queen A4. Uh-huh. Now we have our checks happening <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we were looking for with open yeah, king. Yes. <laughs> Okay, but this check seemed to be quite uh, quite dangerous. Yeah, Black is trying to get to the end game somehow. Or yeah. But white rook e1 is good. White played e6. Avoid. No, or e6 first. E6. Yes. Ah, yes, it is even better probably. Yeah, e6. Because white cannot take the pawn on a3 because then queen d1 yes simply wins so okay king f2 okay but this seems very dangerous for and then and then d4 may be coming in also yeah this seems very dangerous for for white yes um yeah the getting the pawn on a3 does not make this position worth it i think um yeah so that's why white cannot take on a3 but instead played e6 yeah. Yeah. Um, once again, to open up the king's side. So queen d1 check. And d4. And d4, th th that's interesting. Yes, it's... Hmm. Yeah, because now... Um, if white would take the queen and get into this end game yeah he has to do this yeah yeah he has no after d4 the queen has no square and, and then okay so if we just look at this so if he, he must takes take, takes. He takes and then comes a good move <laughs> this move not take on f7 because then the rook is coming in we want the rook c1 is good rook c1 and and then he play rook takes c3 next move. Exactly. He needs. I mean. Yes. If the black rook was able to <coughs> to get into the position position, then it would yeah. be very dangerous for white. Yes. Yes. Uh, especially. Oh, sorry. Especially with such an open king. Yes. There would be many checks, which would be dangerous with yeah. a passed pawn. Yeah. So uh, it's good to eliminate the pawn as quickly as possible. And so, okay, so what is now the idea for uh, for black? What does he want to do? Yeah, what to do here? Because if it will be exchanged, the, the, these two pawns on the queen side for black, c3 and a3, and then if white yeah, will have the two left and he gets a bishop to g2 in time to hit b7, then he's better in the end game, in the rook and bishop end game. Especially because it could be, I mean, that would be three against one. Yes. And three against one pawn, which is weak. Y yes, yes. So uh, if this, this pawn disappears, it's just like, <laughs> it's yes. very dangerous for black. Then. Very dangerous, yes. So Somehow, I'm thinking if I could move the rook somewhere, but... A good place I for the black rook. No, where? Mm. I'm because if I play rook d8... Yes. I don't know if e7 is anything, maybe even e7 is playable first. E7. Or if I can take it first on e c3, if I take on c3, yeah, maybe take on c3, yes. Can you, but can you then check yeah, here? Yeah, this was what I was thinking, <coughs> king f2. King f2, you can go to g2 because bishop f1 checks. So ah, yeah. And then check. maybe check. King 2. E three. E three. And can you now take here? Are you are you can take there also. Oh can you there. take here? Yeah, you first. can take uh, yeah. This what I'm not sure about. Take a bit of everything here. For instance, if if I have to take on E six the first move, 
then uh, then instead of rook d8 yes then it's uh, then oh yeah, sorry rook on yeah if this rook takes c3 and this is yeah this is yeah this is because rook d1 check king f2 and now i mean okay so Okay, of course. White can play. Ah, uh, he can make a draw well. when he wants. Yes. If he wants. Ah, uh, maybe this and take on h two, and the bishop is. Ah, uh, no, the bishop is not trapped. It takes on e six. Yeah, and this just seems. And this is uh, probably winning for white. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the three against one is very dangerous on the queen side. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> this, this would be better. Yeah. Yes. As well, maybe. No. And this is. Yeah, this is just one pawn down and uh, not a good position. Yeah. yeah. The question is the first move here for black. What okay. He did. But then maybe rook d8 is a better option, but then we need to see what happens after e7. So rook d8 and e7. Could you maybe play this? Ah, interesting too, yes. I have to take on c3. And then I was thinking that maybe and it would be... take on a2, no? Yeah. Yes. Interesting too, yeah. Maybe this is An idea can be f5 followed by king f7 here also. And completely stopping mm. this bishop from mm. any play on, on this diagonal. Yes. And of course getting the king close to the pawn. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is uh, this. I'm not sure. I was thinking rook e3, but then maybe I mean the pawn on a3 just seems so dangerous. Yeah. So rook maybe rook a1 and a2 even. Either? Yeah, maybe yes. That. Yeah, maybe it's okay for black. Because yeah. I was thinking, if yes. this. Okay, so maybe where is the king supposed F to go? Oh yeah, ah of course. No. Otherwise, ah. you lose a piece. Ah yes, we have to go there. You yes. have to go there. And then I was thinking a two. And how does he stop this now? Now we can make queen and play rook a eight. You can play rook a eight. Of oh, but then maybe rook. I have bishop h one. I have bishop g two when you take on h two. We check. You have bishop g2. Of yeah. course you do. <laughs> no, we were yeah. looking at the very f... But I can just show it quickly, but... Uh, yeah. Just so that... Uh, oh, I was missing bishop g2 <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> so it's not working then. So we were looking at this, and then I thought that I could play this move with the idea that... Well... Yeah. I thought that the rook was hanging, but of course, there is bishop g2. Yeah. Saving, saving yeah. the day for white. Yeah. So this does not work, this variation. <coughs> okay, so then perhaps, yeah, maybe rook e3, and I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Have they played like this? No, no. I, we can see what they have played. So they are... Okay, so in this position, he played rook d8, which ah, was what we were looking yeah, at. Yeah, he must do that. But after e7, we were looking at playing rook d2, maybe? Yes. But he played rook e8. Ah, he played back there, yeah. He went back. It is safe. He is going to play... Yeah, he... This, this is all... I, he takes on c3, he takes on, on e7, and he takes on a3. This. Yeah. And now we have this... With the yeah, white can make a draw with king f2, king g1 all the time, no? Of course. The question is, does white want to take a draw in this position? Maybe, yeah, maybe he, maybe he must, m must make a draw. He should make a draw, probably. Oh, you th do you think that... Um, <coughs> who do you think is better here? I, I maybe this draw position. Rook e1 check. Yeah. King f2. Rook e2 check. If there, be rook take h2, that is the bishop, <coughs> and he has bishop c6 check coming also. Oh, you, you have only bishop to c8. Ah, bishop c8, you can go. 
bishop c8. There. And then I guess yeah, bishop, bishop c6. This. King to... Where do we go? To f4 or to e3? f4? May yes. oh, I don't know. I don't yeah. I mean maybe no, then maybe... Yeah. Because if king f3, I don't know if you maybe can threaten this. this pawn somehow. Yeah. Okay, so... It's not, it's not clear yet, yeah. Still play. There's still play, yes. But, um... Yeah. It's... <laughs> Hmm. It will take some time, though, for what for black ch for white. I mean, sorry, to to activate these pawns and yeah. to. He must try to do that. He must try to do that, yeah, but it will still yeah. take some time, maybe. Yes. So it's not hopeless for black, of course. But and this bishop is very bad, or not yeah. bad, but. Uh, oh, but okay. So what happens if I move like rook a? Okay, or let's play move. Black moves first. If black if moves first. Yeah. Mm, where do we go? Do we do we check? Some? Maybe you check. On what about this move? Yes, and then it's hanging on B four. And then it's hanging on B four. If yes, yes. If check, and then it's yeah, hanging on B four. Yeah, dangerous. Yeah, then mm, if the B four pawn will be lost, then black is better. Yeah. That is a pawn white must keep. Very important to keep cost, this pawn. No, this pawn. Yeah, maybe I I don't really know. Because if now if uh, white would play something like this, for instance, okay, maybe not now, but this pawn, the h pawn, could become very dangerous. Very dangerous. With the bishop pointing at h one as well. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it's quick. The pawn is quick. The pawn yeah. is quick, yeah. quick and quicker than these yeah. pawns. Yes. So. Uh, White has to be a bit careful as well. Yes. So maybe you're right that um, white wants to take a draw in that position. Yeah, yes. Before. Here. We were looking at check. And maybe the best thing for white to do is to go yes, back so to go back. G1. Yes. yes. Maybe. And okay, Volkov is also a very strong player, so yeah. white will probably not be sad about the fact that no. <laughs> he made a try either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the position so far. So rook e8 and bishop f1 was played. Ah, uh, uh, bishop f1 first. Yes, before uh, taking on c3. That is better probably than... Yeah, he... That is better first to change, yeah. Why do you think it's or better? Is it if if we take take on f one? Yeah, if if I play or normally I would like to keep the bishop, but uh, I cannot probably because you have quick mid b tempo with b five and things, no. And now yeah. I take on e seven and take there. And now the rook doesn't really have any. Yeah, if rook e four, just b yeah. five. B five. Oh, and then it's quite dangerous, yeah? Because now if rook a4 to protect the pawn, then c6, maybe it's... Yeah, if you play rook, rook b4. Rook b4 is better. Yeah, then I play c6, yes. I cannot do this. No, because of course, if rook takes b5, S then c7. c7 is winning. Yes. So, let's just go back one move. Okay, so... White would need to take, black would need to take. Yes, and take back. You have to go back. Yeah. And now we can take a pawn on a3 first. Before playing c7. Yeah, and then to the king goes up just to take the king side pawns. And yeah. And this uh, is just winning for yeah white. Yes. With some technique. Yes. Yeah. But bishop f1 was a good starter. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good move of, of Johan. To eliminate this bishop, which is defending uh, yeah. the pawns and also allowing maybe some more counterplay for black. Yeah, this was a very good move. So, what should black play here then? Uh, That's yeah. the question. If bishop c6, just take on c3, no? If 
that's take on e7 with take on a3 take on e7 and take on a3 and uh, yeah because now even after rook e4 if I move like this then b5 is coming B5. with the tempo yes, as well yes this seems very dangerous. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. Maybe Fürhoff uh, is taking over now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why it is just taking over? By good play, simply good play, yeah. Yeah. Very good play by the Swedish player. So, yeah. Maybe maybe Black wasn't really expecting bishop f1. It's possible, yeah. He was only looking at rook takes c3 immediately. Yeah. Because yeah, it's better to eliminate the bishop right away, yeah. and then to play the the rook end game. Yeah, which is yeah. Now we see the a pawn is not good. It now it became a version where the a three pawn is not good because yeah. it's hanging. Yeah. But some other variations, the a pawn was very good on a three. It yeah. was for in order to win the game, uh, but it's but. Uh, then if it doesn't win, it can also be reversed. It, it can be a can weakness. Be, yeah, it can be a weakness. Yeah, that's what we were talking about before. So it seems like... Uh, yeah, because we thought that black was a bit better in the middle game. Right? Yeah, I, I, I like black in the middle game. Yes. I liked very much, yeah. All right, so we will get back to this game. Okay, we can just see that these two I moves were played here now. Rook takes c3. Oh, okay, sorry. So... After bishop f1, bishop takes f1, king takes f1, rook takes e7, rook takes c3, and rook e4 was played, and b5. Yeah. And yeah. this is what we were looking at. Yes, yes. Exactly this. Oh, and rook a4 instead of rook b4. But now, I mean, what happens if c6? And then... Yeah, Tack för mejlet. Because now if um, if yeah. c six and take take and rook here. Ah, this oh yeah yeah you found it some idea there. This is better than, but okay. Yeah, this is the only way. Because this is what um, uh, this happened. Yes. This ha no, rook a four happened. So this is the last uh, yeah, position uh, of the game. This is right. This is the best. Because yes. uh, rook b four, then we could see that after c six, take take, and rook b eight, we could see that rook a three was uh, possible. Yes. Without c seven. Yes. So with the pawn still on c six. Yes. So then I have a question for you. What is the difference here? Because in this position, oh, sorry. So I wanted to go ah, here. Good, good. And rook c eight. Yeah. And then uh, oh yeah, of course. Now and we now we cannot take because we take the c seven. And uh, that would be now it's important to have the king uh, up, but it's too far away. Yeah, the white king or the black king. The, the white king is too far away. Yeah. The white king is too far away. It will take some time uh, for the white king to go yeah, up. Yeah, you found good way to to keep play there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sergey found it. <laughs> yeah. <th> yeah. <laughs> yes. Or it can be maybe a rook end game with uh, two versus one later on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you mean in how d how do you mean two versus one? Then, uh, yeah. This. Yeah. C6, take, rook back. Oh, sorry, this was a mistake. I meant to go to A8. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, let's say we come with the king. To E2? Yeah. And king also coming. So both of the king and approaching. The question is, we should, because if you can block on C7 play, then can never, yeah, we try C7 first, just to see, rook C8. And then, King up to D. D three. D three. Yes. King E seven. No. Or we go. Or we go. Can we go back with the king? King to C two. Huh? 
So C2, king to C2. Oh, oh, in this position, king C2. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so you can try to take and the pawn on A3 king maybe. D7 or, yeah, king D7, king B3. Then it's a question here. If black should run, with or, or can he take? Would he set pawn and game lost? That's a very, very, very interesting question, uh, which is important to know, hmm? uh, or to analyze at least. If we takes, because if we take, let's just see the pawn and game here. What happens? Yeah. Um. So king takes a three, and now we are into the pawn and game, where we have where white has one passed pawn, but it's two versus three. Yes. On the king side. So yeah. uh, we need to. King was over there. If he can. To b6. Uh, no, I know the white king has to come to the king side. This looks maybe like it should be winning, no? Yeah, I mean, if black doesn't manage to get a pass pawn in time, yeah, yeah. it should be winning for white. As white will just push the white pawn all the way and force the black king to stay within yeah. these squares and then go to the queen side and go to the other. Uh, yeah, otherwise uh, he has spots. to do a few moves before here. When king is on d7 and king, he hasn't taken the pawn here. When king goes to b d7. And b3, and yeah. And then, then to push, let's say g5. g5. And then if he and takes on a3, then we play give check. Mm. And then king b4. And King C8, and stop. Uh, yes, the C and then in that way. May, maybe it can be enough for a draw. I'm not sure. But does yes. isn't what? What about this move here? I take on C7. Oh, you take on C7. Of course. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that's the thing. So the king needs to uh, manage to um, yeah to uh, to support the pawn so that. Black cannot take it. Okay, so yeah, this is this the only way to hmm. to fight for draw. If the other one is lost, the other variation. Yeah. But Huru, Huru is doing well. This is clear. Yeah. Oh yeah, very well. Definitely, it's White who is pressing definitely yeah. here in this game. So let's just see where they're at. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening with the. <laughs> Double pause on the C file. Okay, this is how it is. Okay, so we are at the same position as before then. Yeah, yeah. No, it will be a very interesting end game that will that will follow. But definitely, it's Furhoff who is playing for the win. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um. Okay, should we go to to another game? Okay. To board number three, and then we can move back. So here, Thibault already won. Against uh, the Swedish uh, player white Nikolai Sajjitsin. White one. This was the game yeah. that we saw that was. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Both rooks hanging. Yeah. Oh, what is happening here? Let's just see very quickly what happened after we left the game. <coughs> yeah, because we saw this maneuver that uh, that Black played, and then Knight A7. Yes. Which was what we were talking about with maybe E5 and Bishop moving and then knight c6 with this idea knight went back mm -hmm. yeah we were talking about a bit about rook before as well yes so this was a white one in three more moves after this so let's see how white one g6, g6. d5 but th this is D5. I, is it possible to play E5? E5 instead. No, for black. For oh, for black. black. After after D5. Oh, no, you have D6. You have D6. This oh, is okay. the idea. I'm yeah. sorry. If you can do something first, rook B8 or something, then he cannot play D5 because in black has to try to get the bishop to E7 in order to blockade on D6. If you yeah. get the bishop to D6, it's a marvel marvelous bishop there very good blocking very everything good. so if we could have the bishop here then somehow then white has to open with e5 and then d5 yeah 
He cannot play d5 first because of e5, black blocks the yeah, position. Yeah, black would, so if the bishop was now on d6, then the bishop black would just be able to block. He's bad bishop on c6. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, really have any squares anymore. Yeah, he's blockading his own lines, yeah. And then a move like this perhaps this would have made more sense. And then you, yeah, and then you open for the bishop. Definitely. So, yeah. okay, so let's see how, uh, because there are some tactics here. And... Yeah, why black cannot take here because uh, of d6 yeah. once again. No, wait, he can do and to fight. Wait. Did he do that? No, he didn't and do I this. take it with the pawn? But isn't the... Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And take. Good that you point that out. The queen is hanging. Yeah. Queen is hanging. Really good that you point that out. Um. So then... What happens after? Oh, was this the game? Uh, he he, he b seven. D five. Yeah, r he took on e four. Queen f. Now b should be seven first. First, b should be seven. Bishop b seven. He played. Yeah. Did he do that? Yeah. Yeah. White played bishop b seven here. And then. Bishop f six. Ah, bishop f six. Yeah. And queen f three. Ah, uh, yeah, there, there he loses material, yeah, loses material. But he could have played before, he could reorganize the pieces with the queen and bishop long time before. Black could have done that, not to... Yeah. He, he may try to do it when it was too late. Yeah. That's the first thing he must think about, trying to get bishop to d6 and then queen e7. And then start doing yeah. things. Or bishop to f8 at least, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was also an idea, and perhaps Double easier. on the b line and uh, be ready to sacrifice c7 even, hmm. yeah. That's double root, not to lose material. A pawn you can lose, uh, but then you win the b2 pawn instead. But so is this position lost already then? Now it looks like uh, Oh because if rook b8 d6 is coming. That's the problem. D6 is coming. Attacking the queen. Attacking the queen and the, and rook. the rook here. Yes. So that is a two. trick in the position. So yeah, so it was uh, there is was this tactic. Yeah, he didn't have to position. fall into this simple trick no it was no i think yeah it was yeah so maybe instead of in this position okay but then this is what we were talking about they have to exchange yes. the knights but maybe this whole idea this of rook b4 and then rook to b8 are uh, the rook to b8 yes here and then try to fight yes it's just a pawn down opposite color bishops but you can fight yeah definitely so not, not too easy technique. Black doesn't have to do to show anything. It's white who has to show something. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That's uh, uh, yeah. That's yeah. good to think about sometimes. That you don't have to. I mean, if you're the one who has uh, who is lower in material or who has yeah. a worse position, that's you're not the one who has to prove anything. No, <laughs> no. It's white who has to prove something. White has to prove that he can win this position. So, yeah. So G six was a mistake here. This yeah. It's in general, it's a good move to have in, but first to put the pieces first to have here, there, the rook there, f defend the rook, and then regroup the queen and the bishop, just yeah, or just put the bishop back to f8 or g7, yeah, yeah, and to fight as good as possible, no, with the different colored bishops, yeah, yeah, and then it would have been interesting. Now he lost the position without any fight hmm. in the game. In three, he lost the position in three moves, no? Yeah. Three moves, yeah. No, yeah, because it seemed fine. That's why uh, it was a bit surprising here that... Uh, yeah. Even here, he should play rook to b8. Yeah, he doesn't have to get into this whole tactic. No, rook to b8. But now the bishop will be good. You can take on e6. I, if, you well if I take with the pawn, it's ugly. If I take with the... Queen, the bishop is very good on d5 with pressure very on f7. Strong. But still, uh, uh, yeah, it is difficult. But but maybe then the bishop could activate itself in through g7. It had to be in there before. Yeah. To put up the position before. Or maybe here, like, I mean, even here, perhaps after 
Or Bishop this. F6, there is some yeah. form of yeah. counter chances for black yes. against the B2 pawn. Yes. So and then if white wants to, with bishop on F6, if white plays E5, bishop G7, and then D5, then E5 is weak, is hanging. Sorry, in which position? In a position like this. If, we, if, 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 for instance, for, for, let me see, if, you before d5, before d yeah. here, if black gets bishop f6. Yeah. So instead of g6, bishop f6. Uh, but now we'll we oh. miss the time. But bishop to f6, e5, yeah. bishop g7, you cannot play d5 because e5 is hanging. Exactly, it because of your take. You have to open the game with f4 and then e5, but then it's already uh, another, it's not to resign at all. It's no. You can fight well there. And then we have once again all these themes with perpetual checks or with having the king opened up in end yeah, games later. Yes. Well black uh, is fighting. Which would definitely give black some more counter chances. But it would be a longer game where both yeah, players yes. have to play well. Yes. To uh, but now... <coughs> Black but now it ended very quickly. Black lost without play from that position, I would say, yeah. After this move, and it's just losing. Yeah. Maybe we can take a little break, maybe. Of course we can yeah. take a little break. Yeah. Let's take a little break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, fair enough.
Det får ljudet nu att räkna ut från tärnet det. Mm. Så 5, 4, 3, 2. Okej, okay, we're back from the break now and we have with us Jesper Tivo. Yeah. Who uh, well we were just looking at his game right before the break. Uh, so it's really nice to have you here in the studio. Thank you. To show us your game. Yeah. So um, um, So should we start from the beginning and you yeah, can take us so. through yeah. what you were thinking? So it was some uh, Catalan. Yeah. And I I didn't really prepare bishop e7 because I I thought he played some other line, but I just Okay, so you, you didn't really look at bishop e7 no, before the game. No, no, I just no. But I just played some line that I knew. Yeah. And uh, if we just continue, yeah, this is all normal theory. Yeah. And so you, you, you still knew kind of the theory here. Yeah, it's like the main, main line in yeah. Kesselan. So yeah. if you okay. don't know it, <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> tough, huh? Okay, so a6, fine. a4, it's yeah. normal. And bishop d7 is pretty smart to like uh, develop this bishop, which is usually quite bad. Yeah, that's what we were saying as well in the studio, that it was ah this was yeah. an interesting move. Okay, so the point, okay, so this is a bit of a subline. Hmm? The idea is to, at some point, you play rook d1. Okay, so... Yeah, and you play rook d1, and then sometimes you check the bishop. No, you check the knight on f6, hmm? and then you will end up um, taking playing some knight a3, knight, knight c4, and at some point knight e5, and then you exchange uh, also uh, the bishops, and you have some central control. So, yeah, but okay. So I don't think he knew it that well because he played bishop c6, which is correct. And hmm? uh, after rook d1, yeah, b5 is. Uh, as you played, it's very, it's a good line for black, but it, you have to know it. It's very sharp. Yeah, it's very sharp. Yeah. yeah. There is other moves instead of b5, which is like uh, some knight bd7 or h6, which is more uh, normal play. Knight bd7. Yeah, one line is like knight bd2. Yeah. And then h6, and then I take on f6 and take. With the knight. Yeah, I take the knight and then knight c4, and then by wise idea is basically to play knight f e5, and then to. Try to play with the uh, on the light squares and play against this black bishop in e7, which doesn't do that much. Yeah. And also white has a bit more space. But okay, this is supposed to be all right for black. And it's white okay with changing the white yeah, this bishop? Is, yeah, that's the point, yeah. Of yeah. course you would prefer it not to, but you s you have to here. Yeah. Because it's like on this di diagonal. Yeah. Okay, so b5 is very sharp reply. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> fortunately I've looked at this uh, one year ago, and uh, so I could still remember. You remembered it? Yeah, I still remember yeah. some stuff. And then Good. take... And now knight c3 is the good move. Okay, there's been quite some games here. Yeah. Actually, at some point, uh, okay, wait. So at some point, I was really happy because I found this idea for white, and then everyone started playing it uh, on top <laughs> level. <laughs> so after uh, you played it or before no, you? No, before played because it? it was a novelty. Uh, and then someone played it, and I was really ah. Yeah. Uh, but okay, but now you're claiming that it's your move. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my move. But, but it happens all the time in uh, chess that yeah. you look at a lot of novelties and then a lot of people, they play them. Because yeah, yeah, they've looked at it at the same yeah, time as you. Exactly. Yeah. So here, knight d7 is a big mistake. I think he should play queen e7 or queen e8 is the main lines. And queen, sorry? Queen e7 yeah. or queen e8. This is the two main lines and there is a lot of theory. So. And uh, what's the idea then? Simply to... Okay, I mean, after queen e8, yeah. I would have played uh, d5. This is like the line. D5? And, uh, and it continues, and there's some ed5 and some knight d4. And, and but bishop takes a3? Is that a, is that a bishop, bishop takes c3? c3? Now? Is that a move? I or think is you that can uh, take on c6 then. And then black is really a um, problem. Yeah. No, it's just good to show it yeah, as well. Yeah, because then you will take on b5 and yeah. really be in problem. Okay, so that seems But okay, he played knight d7 because I don't think he knew the line that well. Yeah, and, and then do you I think he missed the tactic? No, at I, that I don't point? think he missed it, but I think he he thought that it was the move because yeah. he had seen something similar. Yeah. And this is very dangerous in chess when you think you have this half sort of remembering, and then you don't remember because oh yeah, uh, it can be catastrophic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he thought this was the move. Yeah. So he played it rather quickly, and I just uh, knew that this was very bad because after knight g5, uh, black is already in big big trouble here. No, yeah, I mean we're saying that. From this point, it's almost like black is just yeah. playing for a draw or trying to hold the draw yeah, after I this. I was really happy after I got to play yeah. knight d5. Okay, he has to take. He has to take. And take on c6. But then these pawns will just become so weak. Yeah. It was also really pleasant to play when you know you just have a big advantage after the opening. Because yeah. then you, you know there is something good for you, so you just look for it. Yeah. Okay, so he has to play rook b8 probably. Yeah. And then I took. Also here there is some d5 move, but I thought there was no reason to complicate the game. 
D5. Yeah, I mean, I was not really sure what's going on here because there were also some B4 now. And then if I took an E6, then there is some take on C3. Okay, maybe this is good for me, but okay, I was not sure. Maybe take? Yeah, but the point is now you can play on take with the pawn on B2. And then if you take the queen, you can take on A1. Yeah, so okay. you can see that yeah. this is not good. So <laughs> <laughs> Let's go yeah. back. So I instead I chose to but play okay. more simple. Can can you not maybe play something like... But yeah, you're yeah, complicating I mean the game a I bit. Mean there with was no reason to do this because, I mean, yeah. my position was good. So I just took the pawn on b5 with the knight. Yeah. And now <coughs> I take on knight b5. And now b5? my bishop on c6 is really strong. Hmm. Okay, so now he played knight b6 to defend his pawn on c4. And okay, I played e4 now just to take more space and also to stop him from going to knight b5 at some point. We were, before we were um, talking about in the studio, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about e3 in this position maybe. Um, if yeah. you considered playing e3 instead of e4 as well. Actually, normally the way is to play e3 and then try to attack the c pawn. Yeah. But I mean, here it made more sense to just grab the space because my pi pieces were so good. But yeah, normally you, you prefer to have the pawn on e3 to defend the e4 pawn. But, but my d4 pawn was just uh, very well protected anyway, so there was no yeah. reason to. So I think e4 is a better move. It's hard to attack the pawn yeah. as well. Yeah. This is more like oof move, I think. <laughs> it was oof who su yeah, suggested e3, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just thought I'd just ask you if, uh, yeah. about the difference. Okay, so e4, yeah. e but it's really hard to <laughs> play a move with black now. Because, okay, he cannot really move the rook on b8, not really move the, the knight, not really move the bishop, and <laughs> move the other rook. Yeah, this bishop is a bit awkward here. Yeah, because it doesn't really do anything, but also it doesn't really have like a better space, better yeah. place in the position. Yeah. Okay, so he played queen e7, hmm. and now maybe I should play h4 first to put the bishop in h6, where it doesn't really do anything. Because if you go bishop f6, you have e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, bishop f6, we have e5, yeah, trapping exactly. the bishop. But I was thinking if maybe after bishop h6... Now rook a7. Uh, now rook a7. Yeah. If uh, okay, maybe not in this particular position, but if this would maybe at some point give him time to play g6 yeah. and bishop f8. This is also my concern. That's why I didn't play h4. Yeah. Because the bishop uh, will he will play g6 and bishop d7 like quicker. But uh, maybe exactly here it was a good idea to do it. Hmm. But after rook a7, he had this knight c8 move. Yeah. And uh, okay, I, I mean still his position is bad. But if he doesn't do this. If he plays like passively with rook f c eight, then he's just completely tied up. I mean, <laughs> he can't move <laughs> anything. No, it's a really sad position. Maybe I even can play here, h four, first, yeah. and then bishop h six, and then maybe some e five. I consider because now I have ninety six ideas, and oh no, there's a lot of ideas. Ninety six is yeah. yeah but, but also I can play in other ways. Like I mean, nice. his position is just very passive. So okay, go back. Yeah, and you're opening up for your white bishop. Yeah, well. exactly. So, but he played knight c8. Now the pro problem is if I take on uh, c7. Because this is a critical moment, a little yeah, yeah, sort of. Because okay, if I can take his pawn for free, it's really good. But yeah. he'll just play queen b4 now. And now my problem is that I want to really want to play queen uh, c3 now. Because if he takes with rook on b5, I'll take back. No, no, no. And take, take back, take of course. On, uh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, you have to take on b5 and rook c5 now. And I attack the queen and the bishop. Hmm. Now he has queen a4. Attacking my rook. And now I have b3. Yeah, and I win because I w I'll take the bishop next time. Yeah. But uh, there is another problem for me. If you, uh, instead of uh, rook b5, of the queen c3, he can just... A instead of rook b5, yeah. Yeah, he can play queen a4 here. Queen a4. Yeah, oh. and I was really not so sure about this. This you looks like such a strange move. Yeah, because of. you're going into like the bishop. Diagonal, yeah. but you're attacking the rook. You're attacking the rook. And my, my pieces, they're a bit strange. And some bishop d8 is coming, and rook takes b5 at some point. Bishop d8 is coming. I yeah. just thought that here there will be some chance that I will miss something. Yeah, it's very tactical right yeah. now. Yeah, and there was just I'm no messing. reason to do this. Yeah. So I, I avoided this. Hmm? So you avoided taking well, taking the c-pawn. Yeah, because I yeah. just played my rook back to a2, and now if you place knight b6, my rook is better on a2 than on a1 because it protects the pawn. Can I just ask you, did you see after after n rook a7, did you yeah. analyze uh, knight c8? Yeah, I thought about it, but, but this was... Um, but at this point, I thought I could take the pawn. 
Yeah. Like I thought it was good, but then I after night eight I saw some some tricks for him and I was not so sure. So yeah, okay, I decided to go back. And if he would go back w- to, to B6, B6, yeah, I would now I play H4 and Bishop H6 and now play Rook A7 because now the line is much worse for him because he doesn't have like Bishop D8 always. And this is why you thought that perhaps before it would have been better to play h4. Yeah, but still Shall I think it was fine to do it like I did because uh, I, I had the chance anyways. Yeah. So okay, he didn't <coughs> go back because he, I think he also thought this was not the best for him. And also because then he's just lost the tempo. Yeah, probably. Maybe. But it's not so sure if it's like the biggest uh, tempo is yeah. so important at all. Okay, so uh, he played knight d6 now. Knight d6, he here we are. The point for uh, black is to try and... Uh, exchange the knights and at some point like exchange a lot of pieces to get into some opposite color bishops yeah uh, where you have uh, much better chances yeah yeah we were talking about this how important it was for him to maybe try if he wants to hold the draw yeah. to try to exchange the knights so if i take on d6 now yeah he will take with the queen <laughs> and hmm? the queen takes c4 and now rook b6 is a bit annoying because uh, i really don't want to play d5 because then he will g- get a really good bishop on f6 and um, here we can see that the bishop would be quite strong. Yeah, here. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, otherwise, I would have to move the, the bishop to a4 or something, and it was a bit awkward. Yeah. So I, I was not so a big fan of this, so instead I tried searching. Can I ask you, here mm. in this position, is this a move? Oh, no, sorry, you take that. Nothing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but yeah, you really want to play e5 with white, <laughs> but here it just... It doesn't work. You're of course not in it time, doesn't. yeah? No, no. But th- th- then I found this uh, knight a7 move. Uh, if we go back. Yeah, after knight d6. Yeah. Which I was really happy about, this uh, knight a7 move. At move 20. Move 20, yeah. yeah. Sometimes these pieces don't really <laughs> coordinate <laughs> with the mouse. <laughs> knight d6, let's go. Okay, knight a7, here because we go. Because now the point for me is to play e5 next. Yeah. And uh, then some bishop e4 and knight c6. The knight will be really good on the c6 square. Where it will be magical on c6. Yeah. Definitely. Where it will be fork the queen and also it's just a really good square. Yeah. It's better than the bishop on c6, the knight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So e5 was coming, so it's not so easy to see what he's going to do about this. So he has uh, to go back then. I mean, there is some other moves for him, like f6 here, but it's a bit dubious, I think. I think his position is just, uh, he's just in trouble here. Okay, maybe there is some way for him to try to escape, but it's it's hard to play here. So now he played knight c8, which I also expected. And now the point is, I take on c8, and I get a much wor- better version than before, if I took on d6. Because his rook will be on uh, c8, and the queen will not be on d6, which is important to kick my bishop mm. on c6. So you're taking here, the queen would have been on yeah, d6. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So now I took the pawn on c4, and now I'm just the pawn up. And also I have a better bishop. So hmm. uh, my position is really good here, but okay, I still have to win. It's not too easy in opposite color bishops. Yeah. And I played rook b4. Yeah, rook b4. And I played queen c3. And uh, okay, now it's not so easy for him. Okay, he's much worse, of course, but he played g6 now. I'm not too sure about this move. We were talking rook about if maybe rook b8 would rook have been B8. a better uh-huh. idea here to try to coordinate his pieces a bit better mm-hmm. uh, and then going for g6 and bishop h6 maybe he was uh, scared of some i think he was scared of some h4 here and then some d5 d5 yeah mm-hmm. because i mean now the bishop is on h6 so you're not in time to get onto the diagonal hmm. and i mean right now i'm I'm not really sure what I'm threatening, but I'm threatening something at least. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm threatening maybe to take on the e6 and get a good bishop on d5. Yeah. And okay, my position is good here, and I don't really know what black should do. But I think it was still a better move than g6. Maybe, yeah. maybe, because... Uh, yeah, g6 seems maybe a bit slow in this position. Yeah, I agree. Um, g6, but, g6 was but then d5... D5. And now I'm threatening a lot of things. Now I'm threatening some d6 and the rook on b4 is hanging. Uh, exactly, and yeah. Also this if is he the takes on the uh, now there's some nice lines. If he takes on d5, yeah. I will take with the rook. And mm-hmm. he cannot take on um, e4 because I can either play rook d8 or play also rook takes g5. But if he takes an e4 with the rook instead. Yeah, of course, here there is this. Yeah. But uh, if he takes with the rook. Yeah, now I can take on uh, g5. Yeah. 
and, and now he will he will end up losing a piece. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. he has a piece down here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so but after rook d5, d5, I expected he him to take on d5 anyways. Sorry, after yeah. uh, here yeah, to exactly. take on d5. And rook takes, and okay, my position is of course much better here. Yeah. I will play e5, and it's very important that he will not get onto this diagonal with his bishop. That yeah, okay. Because so after yeah. bishop f6, I'll play e5. Exactly. To stop him. Yeah, and that's also a point of having the rook on yeah, and exactly. d5. And now a lot of Definitely. things coming. F7 will be a weakness soon. Yeah. Because of the opposite call bishop. And this rook is coming in yeah, as well. Exactly. This seems a lot very of dangerous. A lot of things, yeah. yeah. So, but okay, he after d5 he made a blunder. <laughs> he took an e4, which was not a good idea because he thought after d6 now he can take with the c pawn. Yeah, exactly. And now my there's a pin, so I will I cannot take an e4. But actually, <laughs> <laughs> when we were looking at this in the studio, mm -hmm. um, I I didn't see what had happened in the game, and I said, oh yeah, you can you cannot take on on e4 because then. Uh, D6 comes and I just hadn't seen this whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> then we saw that this is what happened and you can, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, it works. So, <laughs> but Bishop, he, I think he missed Bishop B7 after in this. Bishop B7, yeah. yeah. It's a sneaky move because next time if you move the rooks, D6 is coming. Hmm. So, okay, for example, you can s put in Rook D8 and then, okay, D6 and the Rook will fall. Yeah, and the Rook will fall and Rook, if the he plays Rook D6 now, I have rook a8 also, so uh, too much trouble. Yeah. Okay, so he played bishop f6 instead. Yeah. But now I'll just play queen f3 and I attack both rooks. So he resigned. Yeah. No, yeah, this, I mean, this is just lost, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's completely um, lost here. But we thought it was, uh, it was a bit sad that it ended so quickly in this, like in this whole very or not sad, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> no, of course it's not sad. <laughs> Who are you? No, 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 no. But no, <laughs> no. I just mean that because he didn't really have a chance to play. It was just yeah, at I some mean, point okay, he was it just could have losing. been a long game. If yeah. he, where I had to convert my pawn. Yeah. I mean, I hope I would have managed, but I yeah. mean, it's not for a certain like. But he didn't really have the chance, chance to fight. It just uh, ended yeah, basically. But I mean, I like it this way. So. No, yeah, <laughs> of course <laughs> you like it this way. <laughs> Saved me some work, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, yeah. it was it was really fun to follow the game. Thank you. Um, and thank you for coming to the studio to show us. Thanks a lot. We will take a break now, and then we will continue watching some other games, because we've seen that there are many results now. So we will be back soon. Great. Great. Everything was fine? Yeah. Everything went well. So when are you...
All right, so we're back now from the break, and we will continue watching a few games. There has been a lot of games which have ended uh, by now, uh, so many results from the games that we were looking at before. So that's quite interesting. So we will go through those games and see how they ended. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So here we have the game that we were going through quite a long time, board one. Dimitri Collars against the Norwegian 14-year-old Elham Abd Abdlauf. <laughs> um, uh, yeah? Uh, this is the position. This yes. is the position. And oh. uh, Collars managed to win this game ah, yes. at the end. So this is the Rook end game that we were looking at. Yes. So let's just see how he managed to decide the game. So, oh, there are... Yeah? Let's see exactly where we were at. So I think we were... After C6, that's where we... C6, here. And yeah, and this is when we were talking about maybe going to the king's side to uh, weaken yes. the pawns there. Yes. So we played rook h5, h6. He's taking both rooks to weaken the king's side. Yeah. So he's really going for it there. G6. Sacrificing the h6 pawn. Well, actually, sacrificing. There wasn't really any other good way to defend it. Kay. But c5 here. C5. To activate a bit the pieces. Now king, king should move. Yeah, because you can't... We White couldn't really take on c5 because the a5 pawn was hanging before. Yes. So, white played rook h7. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very natural. Okay, now he took there. Now he took because if he takes on a5 later, then the f7 pawn is also hanging. Yes, yes. So, okay. Oh, yeah. I here we have. There. Here we I have a little tactic. Take on g6 because the rook on h7 is hanging if f takes g6. Yes. Yeah, he will be. Two pawns down, finally, yes. He will be two pawns down, yeah, which y yes. would probably be lost, <laughs> yes. So he has to take on a5 to only be one pawn down. Ah, you look at five, can you? There's only one pawn, but... And here we have this end game. Yeah, this which is... Yeah. Which is which is interesting. How uh, how is normally this end game? Yeah, this may be not so easy, but he should. Can we see a couple of moves for tap? Yeah. So king g two. Yeah. King, king e five. Rook, rook g seven. Now f four. Uh, f four should not be done. This. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just wondering how white should break through or if maybe white should just be pushing the h pawn all the way but but now maybe i play rook a8 here y yes to prevent from rook g8 and sacrificing oh that no seven sorry pawn. sorry oh yeah no no I'm that's I'm the I'm problem no no i cannot i have to play king f6 yes yes and you rook g8 and that uh, this yeah this is not easy. The question is how does black but prevent the H pawn from but promoting? But a few moves before still yeah? again. Can I see here? Yeah, there. I would like to play king e7. King e7, yeah. Not king e5. Yeah, because in this position um, e takes f5. Oh, sorry. So king g2 was played and here king e7. Yes. Yes, because king e5 was played in the game. So king e7. Now the idea is king f6 now. Yeah. Exactly, and stopping the white rook from if entering the g-line. If you go there, I play rook a8. Um, if rook g7, rook a8. If rook g7, rook a8. And, yes. and next move, king f6. Exactly, yeah. And then this rook doesn't really have any good squares to go yeah. to. Because if it goes to the h-file, then it's stopping 
Yes. It's blocking the H pawn. It can very well be a draw, that position. It is chances, really chances. It's hard to break through as, uh, as white. And I mean, I in a position, okay, so now it's, I'm not sure, but okay, in a position like this. Yes, no, King G6. Yeah, I and mean King G6 <laughs> is winning the rook. <laughs> this is not even a draw, it's <laughs> winning for black now. <laughs> okay, but so... Uh, if, if the rook has to go to G5, let's say, oh but he can come out, rook H7 and rook H4, I, King F6. And rook H4. Rook H4, H4 let's say, and yeah. go out there. But and now King G6, let's say, and rook to B4 or before now oh it's out and then to to win this is not so easy yeah because okay so black should uh, white should put his king on king f4 here. yes so king to f4 somehow and, uh, and then it's yes. black i don't know where does black go or when king comes to f4 yeah we can just see a plan maybe instead of doing the yeah. action moves yes then you have some idea with h4, h5 check. And the king takes a h5, king takes f5. King takes f5. Things like this. And but then having the two against one. Yes. Instead of the three against uh, but this double pawn. Still, it's not so. Uh, yeah. Still, some technique to win this. Yeah. Black can try better this way, not to force. Yeah. He forced with f4. Yeah. He forced white to play good moves hmm. g4 to keep but <coughs> better to have the pawns on f7 and f5 and to wait to see what white can do hmm. it happens often when the a player is inferior in the game then it tries to force a draw yeah but it's not possible to force a draw maybe it's the thing is that the player with better position cannot force you win and then it will be a draw yeah <laughs> no that's a really good yeah. way of thinking about it yeah definitely yeah, yeah, yes really because it's really true you always yeah. try to force a draw because you're maybe because you're so scared of losing that you yes. just want to yes. make sure it's a draw yes. and you force it the, the Normally, the best way is just to sit calm in the yeah. in the elevator and to <laughs> wait. <laughs> the door will or at the chessboard <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then, so then it's interesting. So you would s so it's better then to have this double pawns, these two double pawns against three, than removing one of these pawns against two. How would you say? How is that? Yeah, if I could change one pawn, yeah, it would be easier draw for for. Black. It would be easier to if you could remove, if you could exchange one pawn. Yeah, if you can exchange, let's say, the one F pawn for a, the H pawn, yeah. let's say. I, let's say if with this F4, if F takes G3, H takes G3, it will come, no? Then it's easier draw. Then it's easier draw. But, uh, but many times when you have the double pawns, uh, it's it's uh, yeah it's not so difficult to hold the game if you have two f pawns and one h pawn yeah and you have the king on the g7 or g6 these three pawns uh, are not bad they they are not weak either because y you cannot never attack them twice no with hmm. the king and with the rook if if you, if you have it's more difficult to make a pass pawn when you have those pawns those strange pawns yeah yeah so it is for instance, if you have four pawns for white, four hmm. pawns, and black has double f pawn and one h pawn. So let's, yeah, a I don't pawn think we on can. E3, let's let's say. imagine there is a, po a pawn. Okay. On E3. I'm going to make the squares of imaginary pawns red. So if you here, there is a pawn, e and I have one on h6 or or h7. Yeah, this yeah. is. You just sit and wait here. Uh, it's more difficult for white to make an, a pass pawn and to to do anything because these pawns are stopping from both <laughs> are stopping both sides yeah, yes yes almost yeah hmm they are good these double pawns yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because normally one can think that they are th that it's really bad to have these yes pass that it's yes. almost like only having one pawn yeah. maybe but they can be good because they uh, they stop the pawns from moving as well yes 
Yeah. But, but it was well done by Black, I think, to get to this position from the position we looked at before, no? Yeah. He, mm, he played okay, the, the little boy, no? The yeah, 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 yeah. Only 14 yeah. years old, yeah, definitely. Yeah, played okay, yeah. Very good. Against the number one rated player in the tournament. Yes. So, uh, yes. Definitely. It was, uh, it was a long game as well. So, um, yes. Yeah. Okay, so board number two, which was the game that we were, well, against ah. uh, Furhoff, uh, Furhoff against Volkov. He uh, made a draw, uh, finally, yes. He made a draw, and actually, oh yeah, so this was the position that made a draw. So let's just go back. Because we were saying that it was White that was playing for a win uh, at that point. So let's just go a few. So this is the position that we saw ah, yes, last yes. time. And we were talking about C6. Uh, he, white must avoid black from blockading the pawn with the king. If he can get the king to C8 or to C7, hmm. it's good chance that this is just is a draw position. Yeah, uh, because here w we were talking about playing C6, but white instead um, start to go up with the king, which gave yes. maybe black time. And then yes, to also do so. Yeah, then he. He got the king on c7 then, and then it's uh, not so difficult anymore for, for black. To stop it's this. It's important for white to get the rook to c8 hmm. and then to run with the king there. But maybe that was a draw too. I don't know. The, this we, we sacrificed a pawn there and gave a check, and king c8 we played. And maybe that is a oh draw yeah. too. That maybe was the position that we had before. Yes. We were looking at the king. Because the then he yeah. had to do some more good moves with 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 black in order to to get you know, if white could disturb a little bit longer yeah but now black had yes no okay so c6 now so uh, one move later than what we were yes. talking about so uh, maybe it makes it can he do that so and he has to play rook a8 or maybe am i counting wrong there What are you counting? No, I wonder if I'm counting wrong here or not. If C7... Here? Yes. Uh, instead of King D3? Yes. So C7 here. Rook C8. King D3. King. King goes. Yeah. King C4. C2. C2, yeah, this was the maneuver that we were talking about before yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I wonder. Yeah, how is this? There, yes, and king there. And now g5, let's say. Yeah, because we said that the end game, end the pawn end game, game is lost. Probably it is lost, this pawn. Probably. Yeah. For, for white. Uh, so sorry, for, for, for yeah. black, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no, uh, white probably wins the yeah. pawn end game. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So g5, g5 was a better um, yes. chance, we uh, thought. Uh, and white has to, to do anything, yeah, do something. But And if... No, we have to take. Take on a3. If f5, king there, f5, take, take, well there, f3, well there. No, f5 is not. I can run with the king back in the meantime. f5, where do you want to go with the king? King b3. b3, and you want to run with this pawn? No, I want to go with the king. If f4, take, take. King c2, and I'm in time to catch the pawn with the king. Mm, yeah, because if take. this, then we can see that we are in time. Yeah, yes. Yes. So. Uh, so in that moment, after king takes a3, we have to give check on a8. On a8, a8, yes. And to blockade with the king. King b3, king b2. Yeah, this, may I don't king know, b3. maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, so, and king c8. Yeah. And then to play the rook to, to a6 and to go out, try to exchange yeah. 
because why cannot you use the rook w without losing the c pawn? Yeah. But maybe you can play rook c5, disturbing the pawn. F6, F6 and rook, rook c6. c6. A rook a5. I have to do rook a5, something like this. And you take, probably, or yes, you. You don't want to play a4. Uh, a4, yeah. But, but take. You say you take. Take on c7. And then I don't know if this is draw or not, but um, but at least like this, why should I try it uh, like this now? Can you maybe play this move here? This, yes. With the idea that I don't really know how he's going to... And I play uh, rook e5. Rook e5. Yes. And then you have the check here. Yes. Okay. Okay, yes. It might be a draw, but this could have been tried at yeah. least by white. Yeah, this could have been tried because if black doesn't play correctly yeah. here, it's very easy for white to to win, maybe. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah. Of course, it's a very long variation, but um, this is what we were. Oh, whoops. Let's see exactly how. But what happened? Let's see what happened instead. So let's yes. go up. So c6, that's what we were looking at. B takes c6, and this has to be played. And then he went up with the king, king d3, mm -hmm. instead of playing c7, which is what yes. we were looking at right now. King e7, king c4. No, king d6. Now it is very OK for black. No, it just plays king c7 next move. Oh, yeah, I checked first. And yes. And this is just a... Is this y just a draw? Yeah. Uh, 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 the question is if you shall... Which pawn you shall push? Which will push uh, f5 or play for g5? And to try to make something with f5, g5, f4 and the rook behind make him busy there. L maybe f5 is the right move. I was thinking if g5, could you maybe play this? Yeah, maybe you can play like this. And after but this, this. But yeah, let's... Uh, maybe f5 is better. Yeah, f5. We try f5 yeah. to see, yeah. Ah, you took pawn, yeah? And now g5. Um, what do you want white to play? Uh, white, uh -huh. what can I do? Yeah, what can white do? Can you maybe go here? Uh, maybe this move. To with the idea that if king takes c6, we have rook e6 check uh, winning yes, yes. the g6 pawn. But okay, uh, yeah. You take a... Uh, uh -huh. No, we have to take the pawn, I think, no? Well, I mean, if or a move or like or maybe we can, Yeah, maybe we can... Yeah, maybe this is better. Yes, this is a good move. I like this move, g5. Now I was thinking if we could either attack some of these pawns or defend from this side. I mean. And next move, if... Yeah, if rook goes to e5, or so I play rook f8. And then run with the pawn just. And then just run. Yeah, I mean, white has to be a bit careful as well. Yeah. Of course, if this becomes a passed pawn, then, yeah. I mean, this king doesn't really have time to stop yes. anything. So mm -hmm. um, The black pieces are standing well now. The yeah. white has now, uh, yeah, disorganized his, his advantage with the c pawn. That was when he can make the rook busy on c8. It cannot do, now the rook is free can go where it wants and then then it is should be draw always hmm. so that was the main thing i think that it was important to play c7 to f to so rook c8 has to be played hmm. quicker yes yes instead of allowing the black king to yeah when black king comes to c7 yeah. it makes it quite easy for black hmm. yeah okay so uh yeah, this game then ended in a draw.
already in this position. Do you think that they should have kept that White should have kept on playing in this position? N here, one can try a little bit, but it's not really much to play. Here they made a draw. Yes. Yes. yes I think it's uh, correct. Yes. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so these were the two uh, first. Uh, yeah. So the first and second board of the tournament, and these were also the well, along with the uh -huh. third game, these were the ones that we were focusing on the most uh -huh. throughout the commentary. Uh, but we already went yeah. through Tibo's game. Uh, um, yeah, yes. Yeah, where he well, you can see where he both rooks were hanging. Yes. Uh, but we already went through this game with Tibo here in the studio, so we can see that for the Swedi Swedish grandmasters, we didn't really go through. The games, but uh, both Erik Blomqvist, yes, well, who was playing against, he had a lot of time at the end of the game. Oh, he was 18 moves. Uh -huh, okay, we didn't really go through this game, but um, both Erik Blomqvist and Tiger Hill are person. Yes, who are the two, uh, the two highest-rated Swedish players in this tournament? Yes, both of them won yes. today's game and I just want to see because 18 moves what happened oh oh and in this position of course if takes then maybe bishop yes e5. so maybe it was just a tactic tactical mistake um and we were looking also a bit uh at Leo Leo's game against the Cuban Grandmaster Ah yes, what happened? Luis yeah. Ernesto Quesada Perez, where uh, Black managed to win, and here there are yeah, Black has many more pieces than <laughs> White <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> in this moment, <laughs> but uh, <coughs> here we can see a little bit what happened. Yes. Uh, he gave the queen for two rooks. Ah, so that's and what he decided to do. Oh yeah, here we we were here, yeah. Yes, and we were looking at this position. And he made a good move right away there after give taking on d six, bishop e five he played. That is a good move. The knight cannot remain on d six. It has to go. And maybe uh, also, yeah. Mm? No, I was just gonna say that maybe also sometimes there are some ideas with h four and perhaps, you but know. Yes, or maybe just just to move the a pawn is enough now to win okay yeah just to course. go down i think just to go down and the bishop is also controlling this square in here what did he do which move so did he let's see what he played knight, knight b5. b5 yes and now push yeah f4 queen c6 Okay, mm -hmm. trying to get into Black's position with with uh, with the white yeah. pieces. We should be two good yeah. move, good move. Uh, reinforcing a three. F five, yeah. F five. Okay, he has to do something. Yeah, he has to try. Has but to now try. take on f five, yes. And yeah, the pawn is too strong on a. Fall. He will win material, yes. And also there is never, I was thinking about some ideas like this and trying to mate somehow here, but this bishop is always controlling the g7 yes, square. Yes. So there is never really a mate on g7. No, no. Because this bishop is so strong. Yes. So, um, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, this, and then I took there, even that he can play, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I mean this pawn. I see. Oh, and now he doesn't really have time to try to do any perpetual checks because he will get no queen on what time. Queen b seven. Okay, five. Yes. Now, it's it's I if he would have played, let's say queen to b4, then he plays just a2 Yeah. and winning. Because now he's not taking the rook with the check. Now that is lost position, this end game. Yeah. So this end game would be 
lost. Yes, yeah. yes. Pawns are very weak as well. So, yeah. Yes. So he checked on c8, king g7, queen takes f5, bishop f6, stopping the checks. Ah, uh -huh. uh, yes. Queen takes h5. Two. Allowing the g4 check. Yes. King h6. Queen h3. King g6. I mean, this is something that one needs to analyze because uh, there are some checks here. Oh, yeah, but of course, bishop g5. g5. And then check. King h6. King h6. Yes. Queen e8. Oh, and now when you take the queen, you're stopping. Yes. Oh, sorry. You're stopping the check here. Yes, you. So, king h2. Yeah. Yes, yes. And here, bl uh, white resigned in this position. Ye yes. Because there aren't any more checks to come. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was an interesting game to yeah, follow. Yes. Very anyway. interesting game, yes. Yeah. Between one of, yeah, between a Swedish junior and uh, a Cuban grandmaster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think these these were all the games that we looked through. Mm -hmm. These were all the games that we looked through throughout yeah. the commentary today. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, and most games have finished right now by this point. I think there aren't, I can see, but I don't think there are so many games left. So, uh, maybe we should conclude the day. Mm. Maybe we should finish yes. the day. Yes, it's yeah? okay for today, I yeah? think. Yeah, yes. because uh, we don't really have a lot of uh, more games to, yeah. to go through that are live right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but we will be back tomorrow for round two. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to follow many more interesting games. Yes, yes. yes? Okay? Yeah. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you for today. Thank you.